Good evening, and you're very welcome uh, to uh, this Kerry College uh, information webinar uh, this evening on uh, Tuesday, the 11th of May. Uh, we are uh, proud and delighted to be here for the first in a series of virtual information events uh, heard, held by Kerry College of Further Education and Training. My name is John Herlihy. This evening, we're joined by uh, many, many of our uh, Kerry College colleagues uh, from across each of our uh, five campuses. And they're going to give you a flavor of what we offer uh, at Kerry College. Now, you'll also hear from our learners how they have found the Kerry College experience. Uh, last year was our first full year as an integrated college. Um, we had over 4,000 full time and part time learners uh, pass through our doors um, and also apprentices, so learners and apprentices, most of them virtually, of course, due to the pandemic. Um, but we had as many on campus uh, as we could across the, the last year. So I suppose this year we're looking ahead to things returning to some sort of normality and welcoming uh, so many new faces back on site at our campus locations, of course, all in line with public health advice. And I guess, you know, one of the things that people will, will often say to me, they'll say, well, you know, John, what um, is different about Kerry College? Um, could you kind of outline, you know, what is different? And I suppose in a way, uh, there are there are a number of ways that Kerry College is different. I suppose, first of all, Kerry College is Ireland's first integrated college of further education and training. Um, and we were set up uh, just over a year and a half ago. Um, it's a first for Kerry and it's a first for Ireland. But what does that mean, though? Uh, what it really means is like we have 80 full time programs, which is a very large and diverse offering. But we also have a new approach to classifying courses. Um, and uh, that's really basing. Uh, the courses on the outcome that you want. So you can choose a course based on the outcome that you want uh, at Kerry College. And just going through them really quickly, getting a job is one, uh, which are courses for employment or employment focused courses, all about building skills um, and, and, and developing uh, your job readiness. The second is what we call progression courses, which are where you bridge to third level. And they used to be called further education or PLC courses. We call them progression focused courses, where you look at exploring a career area before you go off to third level uh, and, and continue your studies. And then the final piece is the apprenticeship, which is uh, a model that's coming back um, into popularity hugely, uh, very popular with employers and very popular with uh, school leavers who want to specialize in a particular area and develop skills. There's a range of craft apprenticeships and there are new ones as well. So we work across those three areas, employment focused, progression focused, progression to third level and further study and also apprenticeship. So this evening's information session uh, is going to last a little bit over an hour, probably about an hour and a half by the time we're finished. It's focused on courses starting this September. So that's the, the focus of that. We're thinking ahead that a lot of people have been asking us uh, questions about, you know, what's starting in September? Will things be back to normal? But what's the range of courses on offer? So this evening, we're really going to give you a, a, a flavor of what we offer at Kerry College across all of our campuses for the courses starting in September. Our progression focused courses will start on the 13th of September. Um, our employment focused courses will start on the 1st of September. So tonight, really, it's an overview of all of these courses. It's a chance for you to hear from our learners of a number of learners to chat with as well across the evening. And um, we can't really wait to do that. We're looking forward to it. Uh, and also, then you'll be able to ask questions uh, via the Q&A function um, there. You can also use the chat function if you'd like. But the Q&A button is, is, is what we would advise you to do if you'd like to ask us a question. And we will do our very best to get to those. Uh, during the event this evening. We very much hope that you enjoy it. And thank you very much indeed as well for joining us this evening. So first of all, we'd like to introduce you to, uh, I guess, the two people that keep the show on the road every single day at Kerry College. Um, in, a, in a moment, we'll be speaking with Conal Sullivan, who is our uh, campus manager at the Mona Valley campus. Um, but first, I'd like to introduce you to Stephen Goulding. Stephen Goulding is the campus manager, um, or the principal, I should say, at our Denny Street campus, uh, at our uh, Clash Road campus, and also at our Listowel campus. So, uh, Stephen, uh, good evening to you. Thank you, John. Um, and look, I'd like to welcome everyone to this evening's webinar. Uh, like John said, this is the first in a series of webinars. Uh, and I suppose tonight's uh, webinar really uh, sets and outlines uh, the many courses we have under courses for progression, courses for employment, uh, and also our apprenticeships. We have colleagues here from all our campuses tonight, Mona Valley Campus, Clash Campus, Denny Street Campus, Listowel, and also we'll be talking about the courses in our National Outdoor Education and Training Centre camp campus in Captain Lee. I suppose tonight is a snapshot of, of what we provide uh, future webinars will deal with the questions you may have around uh, around courses for progression and moving on to higher education after your 
course with Kerry College and also in terms of learning supports and also in terms of income supports that will aid the learners throughout their journey uh, in uh, Kerry College. So look, uh, everybody's very welcome and we look forward to, to this evening and to our staff and learner contributions as well as questions from, uh, from the wider audience as well. So thanks very much, Jan. And thank you very much, uh, Stephen. Really good to see you. Uh, Con O'Sullivan also joins us this evening. Con is our campus manager um, at the Mona Valley campus, which is the Centre for Apprenticeship in Kerry, um, and, and also is involved with our national outdoor education and training campus as well at Cap and Lee. Uh, good evening, Con. How are you? Did we have Con there? Oh, there we have him. Hi, John. How are you keeping? I'm very uh, well. We don't see you yet, Con. We'd like to see you, though. I, I, uh, I'm doing, I, maybe you might be better <laughs> off, John, but I, I, I've been told the host to stop to my video. Oh, really? Oh, that's yeah, not yeah. good. That's not good. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to force you now to put on your camera. Um, we go there, there we, we go. go. There we yeah. go. And you're at the beach, which is really nice, Con. It's I do, nice yeah. You made the beach this evening. <laughs> um, look, I, I suppose, look, just, just to all who, who are joining us, I'd like to just say good evening to you. Um, by way of introduction, my name is Con O'Sullivan, and as John has said, uh, and Stephen, I'm the campus manager at Kerry College, Mona Valley Campus. Um, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to join us this evening at this evening's virtual event and indeed for your consideration uh, of our offering. Very briefly, you'll be hearing from our colleagues later on uh, as we progress through the evening, but just as, as a snapshot of Kerry College Mona Valley Campus uh, uh, and what we do. Kerry College Mona Valley Campus offers in excess of 110 full-time and part-time courses, spanning courses for employment, courses for progression and apprenticeship. Kerry College is the premier provider of apprenticeship training in the county of Kerry. Um, and our ecosystem of full-time day and flexible training and development courses offered at various levels um, is designed to build confidence, knowledge, and work-ready skills and experience. A typical year for us in Mona Valley Campus will see us um, train um, and provide training on, on nationally and internationally recognized qualifications to in excess of 3,000 um, learners and apprentices. And as we progress through this evening, you'll hear firsthand the experiences um, of Kerry College learners and apprentices, in addition to that of our instructing and teaching staff. Now, I appreciate that this evening, hopefully we'll give you an awful lot to consider and think about. Um, and whilst the event is an opportunity for us to outline the world of opportunity that is available uh, to you at Kerry College of Mona Valley Campus and, and our various sister campuses, I would very much welcome the opportunity to engage with you directly. Um, and on this note, please don't hesitate in contacting me um, or any one of the team at any one of our campuses with any questions or queries that you may have. Very good. Um, thank you so much, Con, for your time this evening and good to finally see you. So I'll let you get back to the, the bucket and spade there at the beach and uh, <laughs> we'll see you later. Thank you, Con O'Sullivan, uh, our, ca our campus manager there in Mona Valley uh, for uh, chatting with us uh, this evening. And uh, as Con, I suppose, echoed there, it's it's important for us to know, to let you know that, you know, we're always available to to chat to you either at campus level, uh, but also at our admissions office at 7 Denny Street, which we opened last year um, and had to close the office pretty quickly because of the pandemic. But our team, um, um, kept working. Uh, so they're available, you know, office hours um, Monday to Friday at um, 066 714 9696 or via the email info at kerrycollege.ie. And of course, all of our courses are available uh, at our website as well, which is kerrycollege.ie. You'll see our full range of courses. Click the full time courses button on the homepage and it'll take you into a section of the of the of the website where you can uh, see the courses split between courses for progression and courses for employment. And there's an awful lot for you to get your teeth into there. There's an awful lot. So any questions on that, always get in touch with us. OK, so first of all, uh, this evening, um, I'd like to in introduce uh, Yvonne Kelly, who's on our staff. And uh, Yvonne is going to give us um, a an overview of two very popular Kerry College programs, uh, pre-university law and pre garda studies. Uh, Yvonne, good evening. Nice to have you here. Hello there. Good evening. I hope you can see me. We can. We can. So good it's good, good, good to have you. Uh, and uh, of course, in case anybody needs reminding, this is live. This is not pre-recorded. So... <laughs> Everything here is live, so we're going well so far. Yvonne, tell us a little bit about these programs because um, they offer great value, but they're also a brilliant way of exploring a career for a school leaver in particular. Well, um, I'm, I'm delighted to be here now this evening. I think it probably would be best if I could show some slides, show a little bit of presentation, just so that I make sure I can kind of highlight the best of what I want to talk about now this evening as I introduce our two legal studies courses. So I'll just share the screen.
Okay, so hopefully now you can all see my screen here. So why, what I want to talk about this evening is why study legal studies in Kerry College. We have two courses that both lead to a major certificate award in legal studies. So the two courses basically are designed for anyone who has an interest in understanding law, studying law. We will definitely have something that you will be interested in. If you're interested in crime prevention, social justice, human rights, also, if you're interested in politics, news, uh, corporate and business law issues, you will be finding a lot of interesting elements of our courses that will help you figure out and understand how our legal system works. And this is a great advantage before starting a three to four year program at third level to find out whether or not it is for you in the first place. So the, of the two courses we have, we have pre garda studies, which, are an, which is an ideal foundation for those who would have an interest in pursuing the career with Ungarda Shear Corner. And we designed the course particularly around kind of key legal subjects, but also with a view to ensuring that students get the benefit of um, conflict resolution, communication skills, so that they are basically in a good position to consider going forward for the Garda recruitment programs. It is part of the government program um, to look to recruit a number of guards in the next number of years. And we would think that our graduates would be ideally placed going forward for Garda recruitment. The other legal course that we do is pre-university law. And this course is designed for those that want to pursue um, law or law related subjects at a third level. And we go over a number of key subjects uh, in um, to build towards a proper foundation in Irish legal studies for those interested in pursuing uh, third level courses. Our Students from previous years have been successful in going to Trinity, UCD, UCC, UL, uh, Waterford Institute of Technology. Our students have always thrived then when progressing on to third level uh, colleges. So these are the breakdown of the particular subjects that are studied when one studies pre garda studies. You will see leader, legal uh, practice and procedures, criminal law, criminology, also business law with a view to white collar crime. And then we look at the practical skills as well in terms of conflict resolution, word processing, work experience and communications. For those interested in our pre-university law program, what we look at studying is in the main uh, business law, criminal law, criminology, legal practice and procedures. And then we also look at uh, practical courses that are important for advocacy and to develop the ability to speak and be confident in terms of public speaking and that would include communications, conflict resolution, as well as the ICT skills of word, word processing as well. So basically to wrap up, um, studying either of the two legal courses we have, both pre garda studies and pre-university law, will give you an opportunity to develop a range of skills and understand our legal system. You'll have the chance to strengthen your understanding and deepen your own experience with the benefit of our expert teachers uh, who include lawyers and professionals from the criminal justice system and also as well we particularly focus in Kerry College over our year on a program of guest speakers and we have guest speakers uh, which include a number of different professionals from different elements of the criminal justice system and the legal world uh, to include Angada Shiakona, a prison service, probation services, victim supports units, juvenile justice as well. So basically what I want to finish off with is the fact that Kelly Co Kerry College students will acquire skills as well as practical knowledge to develop a legal career. That's fantastic. And I thought there you were empire building when you mentioned Kelly College, which is a <laughs> I could. <laughs> That's very good, uh, Yvonne. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate that very comprehensive and interesting overview of uh, the courses relating to legal studies here at Kerry College. Thanks for your time this evening, Yvonne. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Pleasure. So from Yvonne, we are moving to a gentleman who will be well known to uh, fans of inter-county hurling and club hurling as well in County Kerry. Um, on our staff is Colm Harty. And uh, Colm joins us uh, this evening. 
uh, also from the same beach it looks like that Col that Con O'Sullivan was on so I, I have a feeling that somebody didn't tell me about a beach outing this evening and Colm is going to give us a brief overview uh, of our sports programs. Uh, Colm, good evening. Nice to have you with us. Uh, good evening, good evening, John. Thanks very much for opening Benny here this evening. So <laughs> long may it continue. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm just going to quickly give you a whistle stop tour of our sports department. Um, I suppose just to give you, uh, I suppose you all a kind of a, a bit about myself. I'm actually past student of Kerry College where I studied the sport and recreation course. I uh, went down to IT Tralee to study health and leisure and then finished off in ULP teaching. So I kind of come around full circle and now I'm currently teaching um, across the three courses at Kerry College. So um, these are the courses that we offer at um, Kerry College, three sports courses. So we have sports exercise and coaching, uh, sports and pre PE teaching and personal training and nutrition. So these three sports courses are all QQI certified. I suppose the unique design of the course allows you, the student, to pick a course that's best suited to your needs, whether that's progression to QQI level six or higher education, or if it's towards the employment route. Um, I suppose it's important to note as well that um, there's three teachers working in these three courses along with myself. We have Ian McLaughlin, who's a former Irish international basketballer, and Kevin Beasley, who is um, a nutritionist with Kerry J. So a good wealth of experience there as well. Um, just to give you a brief overview of the um, modules within the three courses. So at the top here, you'll see we have exercise and fitness. So this is probably one of the main modules within the three courses. Um, it's strength and conditioning based. And I suppose what's important to note here as well is that we're in the process of uh, rolling out a new state-of-the-art high performance gym. Um, that'll be ready to roll out um, next term. So again, that'll really add value to particularly this module. Um, we cover nutrition across the three courses, sport and recreation studies. So just to give you a snap of what, what that entails. Um, you'll be going out with different organizations, for example, Captain Ali, um, engage with other types of organizations, public and private gyms. So getting to sample different organizations and really just getting out to sample different activities outside the college. Um, leisure facility operations, uh, the name is in itself, uh, basically getting an understanding of how a leisure facility actually operates. We also offer a variety of coaching modules. What's great about the coaching modules we offer is that they're all certified in names. So they're actually coming out with a cert. So for example, GA coaching, you come up with a, a foundation uh, cert from this. Same with uh, basketball and the soccer is level one kickstart. Uh, just a note with our level one kickstart, um, down through the years, um, I suppose pre-pandemic, um, the, co uh, the, the college, um, often got calls from organizations over in America um, asking would our students be interested in going over there for the summers uh, doing soccer coaching. So again, that's that's an option that, that could be there for students that might be interested in going on a J1. They'd have that option of um, doing soccer coaching over there. Um, we also offer the ITIC certification. So this would be mainly towards the um, personal training students. So within this, they would have gym instruction um, which is an award, and then the strength and conditioning, which is a certificate. So basically, just get an idea of that. That would be okay, the, the gym instruction. Will be you'll be looking at okay, how the, di the different exercises within the gym, different um, learning about all the different type of equipment, um, warm up, cool down, and so on. Whereas the strength and conditioning side of things will be more tailored towards program design. So if you ever got a gym program, you'll be learning how to design up a gym program. Um, and really the, the why question, why do we put certain exercises within, um, in a gym program? Then we have the concepts of education. Again, this is um, specifically for our pre-PE teaching students. So this is an add-on module that they are required to do for um, if they're applying to UCC for PE teaching. So progression opportunities and employment opportunities. So progression opportunities, uh, students can move on to QQI level six in strength conditioning at, at Kerry College. Um, 
the heads and ledgers and let her be going for our students. What's great, as you can see here, is the plus 30 points for our students. So a majority of our students this year will apply for the health and leisure course at MTU. Uh, and what's great is that they'll get an additional 30 points. That's the link between MTU and Kerry College. Um, within our PE course, we'll have uh, some of our PE, PE teaching students. They'll apply to UCC um, to study PE teaching. And then others um, have the option of applying for a variety of higher education courses throughout Ireland. So, for example, you have sports uh, or business studies in sports in LIT, um, physiology and health science in Carlo IT, and ex health and exercise science in WIT. That's just giving you a, a general idea. Then the employment opportunities, I suppose, from a personal training uh, perspective, um, they can obviously go and do a bit of personal training. They can work in leisure centres uh, as a leisure attendant and as a gym instructor. We also offer an add-on of pool lifeguard certification that's open to all three courses. And again, that's great for your CV and it just opens your whole, I suppose, that field for um, employment opportunities. Quickly, with regards to our facilities, we are based out of three um, really sports complex. So on a daily basis, our students would engage in fantastic state-of-the-art facilities. You can see here through the images, um, they have access to the pool. Um, lot, any any time when the we're outside, uh, with the uh, we can avail of the astroturfs, and then obviously we have their state of the art um, indoor facility, which people might be familiar with the Truly Warriors games. So again, we have fantastic facilities, and like I mentioned earlier, we are in the process of rolling out our new gym, which is really going to take our. Um, I suppose our course is to another level. As you can see from the images, state of the art. Um, it, it's, you know, it's going to have the best of everything and it's really going to add value to our courses. Thanks for watching um, and I hope you enjoyed that uh, presentation. That's great, Colm. That's very comprehensive and you gave great context as well there in terms of the employment and the progression uh, opportunities. Thank you so much for that, Colm. Uh, this Thanks feels so. like a whistle stop. All right. I'm glad you put in the whistle at the start there because it is it feels like speed dating, really. <laughs> but, but, but uh, you know, you, you put it well uh, in terms of the whistle stop. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, Colm, and uh, we will chat to you again. Um, so next, we are moving from sport to our uh, creative media department and Kerry College is a very large range of creative media programs, uh, not, in not just in terms of creative arts, but also media and uh, music production. And joining us this evening, we have a double act, no less. We have uh, Miranda um, Kernan and Shane Murphy joining us. Good evening to you both. And looking forward to hearing um, uh, you take us through uh, what the creative arts department has. For sure, good evening. Uh, hi folks, um, I'm gonna share my screen here real quick. All right, so um, my name is Shane. I'm going to talk to you guys um, about the Department of Creative Arts in uh, Kerry College. Um, just by way of introduction, um, let's see if this thing is working. It is. Uh, my name is Shane Murphy. I'm a coordinator on the animation and the computer games design and development um, courses. I also work with some of the, the other creative arts courses as well. Um, just talking about the creative industry in general, uh, there was an article in Forbes last year that looked at a study uh, of over 10,000 people in five different countries and uh, the average daily time spent consuming content was up around six hours and 59 minutes. So if you think about that, seven hours of content um, each person is consuming every day on their phones, on their tablets, um, on their laptops, and that's videos, music, it's um, journalism, uh, news articles, all that stuff. And this industry is just growing exponentially and continuously and companies need content creators and, and who makes that continent but um, the creative arts professionals. So I guess in response to that, Kerry College has a broad range of creative arts courses on, on multiple campuses, looking at things like videography, production, uh, photography, music, animation, journalism and games design, tattoo and, and more. Um, there's a link here and I think that um, maybe John's going to share some stuff with you tomorrow or later on. But just to look at that page on the, um, the Kerry College website, the um, creative arts courses, uh, the list is quite long and uh, there's lots of different things depending on what a student might want to get into and sample or work in or progress to college in. Lots of different options. So I'd encourage everybody to have a look at that on the website. Um, 
I'd like to talk more specifically about the courses that I'm more involved in. Uh, for example, the animation course. So the modules in the animation course would be animation drawing studies, um, computer 3D modeling and animation, computer illustrated graphics, digital editing, drawing, figure studies, teamworking, and the practical component of work experience as well, which is great for networking and um, developing an understanding of how the business works. And um, what you're seeing here is an example of a hand-drawn digital animation that was a final year project from one of our students in the animation drawing studies module. So um, a really neat project um, developed over the course of the year. Um, and the other course I'm involved in, um, in a large way, is the computer games design and development course. Um, some of the modules cross over, like the 3D modeling or the digital editing, but it has some of the unique modules there as well, like games analysis, design, um, design skills, web authoring. So there's lots on offer in, in, in those courses and, and all the courses in, in the media space or the arts space. And it gives students a really good, broad understanding of the professional um, tools and softwares that are being used. I mean, for example, the software that was used to design this, this is another student project here for the end of the year. And this is a 3D model created out of, from scratch. Um, the student designed all the elements that are in there, added lights, added movement, added cameras, and outputted a video at the end. And this software is used for creating things like um, maybe Shrek or Toy Story. So people leave real good practical understanding and, and really good projects and portfolio pieces as well to progress onto college or onto employment. Um, so that kind of covers what I'm going to talk about this evening. I'll, um, I'll stop sharing here and I'll, I'll hand you back to John or, or on to Miranda to talk about the music courses, perhaps. Thanks very much, Shane. That was really, really good and some really, really cool animation stuff there. Uh, it was really, really nice. Uh, thank you for that. And Miranda, I see you standing by. So Miranda, we'll bring you in as well. Maybe you can talk to us a little bit more about the courses you're involved in. Great. Hi, John. How are you? Thanks for that, Shane. I'm just going to continue on with um, focusing specifically on the music courses that we have as part of the creative arts department. So I'm just going to start with a little video. Hopefully the sound will be working fine for this. So that's just a quick video showing the kind of work that the students get up to. And thanks to Shane for that. Shane actually put that video together for me yesterday. So thanks a million. So I'm just going to go through the what you can expect to do if you come to Kerry College to do a music course. So we have two that we run at the moment. We run a music performance course and a music technology course. So in terms of where those courses fit in um, from an industry perspective, so the live entertainment industry in Ireland would be worth in excess of 1.3 billion in terms of the additional revenue that it generates into the economy. And those studies were done in 2017. So they're the most recent data that we have. What it really means is that for every one euro that is spent on a ticket sale, it generates up to another between six and seven euro in terms of input for industries like um, hotels, services, pubs, restaurants, accommodation, transport. All of those industries would benefit from live entertainment events. In terms of music events itself, it's responsible for between six and 7,000 jobs. Obviously this was all pre-pandemic, but I think things are gonna start making their way back to, to those levels and higher once we all get back to normality again after the, the COVID pandemic and certainly the early uh, findings from studies that have been taking place in Europe in terms of running safe events are very promising at the moment in that there are ways to run events safely and avoid the spread of COVID. So I think things will be picking up again very, very soon. So then in terms of the modules that we have, so for music performance, um, the focus is really on developing your music theory and your performance skills. 
And we also look at what's happening within the music industry in Ireland and internationally. So what are the trends in the industry at the moment? Obviously, for the past year, it's been very much about live streaming and about promoting yourself online through social media. So we do look at all of that and students get an opportunity to try that out in terms of project work. We also look at the whole area of events um, and sound production. So students learn how to manage their own PA system, how to use their mics, um, how to run an event, how to produce one. Um, and that includes everything from promoting the event to actually running it and reviewing it and evaluating it afterwards. Also very important um, part of these courses is teamwork. So the creative arts is extremely interdisciplinary. It's very important that you know how to work with other art professionals, artistic professionals. So teamwork is very important in the music courses and we encourage students to engage in teamwork. Uh, work experience is also very important. This is where our students make their contacts locally. So both within Kerry and um, nationally, they can make contacts with people for work experience. From the music technology side, then the focus is more on the crew or technician side of things. So the people who prefer to be behind the scenes when it comes to live performance. So the focus is on technology. So you using digital audio workstations, sound engineering, again, knowing how to manage PA systems, things like audio production using MIDI, and then there are some shared elements with the other music course where students work together on projects in the area of performance and event production. But again, students that maybe don't like necessarily to be in front of the mic may prefer to work behind the scenes in the music performance activities that we do if they're on the technology course. So then in terms of employment and progression, so our students in the past have really gone in both directions. They've gone straight into employment um, in terms of the local music industry in Kerry, they've gone into local youth projects run, for example, by Music Generation or Creative Ireland, or they've gone into local venues and festivals. Obviously, we have the Ionic on our doorstep. We have a huge amount of festivals running in Kerry. Um, a lot of students like to work as crew and technicians, or they like to be front of house and perform live as well. We've also had students progress to higher education. So over the last number of years, we've had students progress to the music technology courses in MTU, um, event management in MTU, also the BA and BMOS programs in Cork and the Cork School of Music in UCC and in MTU Cork and further afield students have gone on to Dublin to the BIM Institute and also to DCU where there are contemporary music programs there as well so really there are two options you know employment and progression out of these courses but a lot of our students stay local and they contribute to our industry here locally in Kerry. Some of the most recent projects then our students have been involved in. So it's very practical, it's very skills based. You develop a lot of project skills. And as I said, working with other members of your, of your team and your peers and your contemporaries is really, really important. So the last number of years, we've um, been engaged in events to highlight a lot of different issues and to fundraise for different organizations. Uh, so we've done some outdoor performances to raise awareness for world mental health and also to raise money for St. Vincent de Paul. Um, on the video there, you probably saw the, um, the student lip sync and karaoke event that our students helped coordinate um, a couple of years ago. And this year, because of the pandemic, our work really has been very much online. So we were involved in a live streamed music event for Pieta House in December, which raised a thousand euro for Pieta. And then more, more recently, the students have collaborated with the students, photography students from the store to put on an online um, exhibition as well. And that's still available. If anybody wants the link to that, I'm sure John, we can arrange that to send it out to people. So thanks for that. That's all I have on music. Very good. Miranda, thank you so much for that. Very comprehensive overview. And I think just uh, as you finish sharing your screen there, we'll just remind people that uh, I suppose also starting in September will be three courses uh, which are based in the Mona Valley campus. There is digital media production starting um, in September and also our broadcast production program, which looks at uh, upskilling crews for TV and film. Um, there's also a, ra a radio journalism and digital uh, radio journalism and radio broadcasting course starting in the autumn. And we're currently recruiting as well for a media graduate internship program, which is for really for graduates that um, have finished their degree program either this year or last year in a media production discipline, uh, but want to build their production credits and their skills across the summer in County Kerry. That's a an on campus experience. It's not a course per se. It's an internship experience, which is starting in middle of June of this year in our digital skills center in uh, the Mona Valley campus. And you can find out more about that program if you go onto our website, kerrycollege.ie, and look for the media graduate internship. Okay, so um, I'm actually deputizing next. I get to present as well, which is great. Um, our colleague Joe O'Shea could not make it this evening. And Joe um, is, is, is one of the uh, people in our uh, department that deals with uh, tech programs. And uh, tech programs are, of course, um, 
uh, really, really important for the growing uh, tech industry. And I wanted just to give you a, a very quick steer uh, of, of, of the kinds of programs that we do um, at Kerry College uh, in terms of um, um, ICT. So just uh, really briefly, we're, we're starting an IT fundamentals program um, at the end of May, which is a 10 week program, which is a fantastic chance for uh, school leavers or also people that want a career change to move into the uh, either IT support um, or the cybersecurity space. It's a really, really good program, um, 10 weeks long, full time. Um, we're only going to have, uh, because of the existing public health um, uh, restrictions and guidelines, uh, nine places on that program. So it's already oversubscribed, uh, but there is a recruitment process in place for that. So we don't offer the places first come, first served if there's a recruitment process uh, for that. But if it's something you think that may be of interest, let people in your life know, or maybe it's something for yourself. That's the IT fundamentals program. That feeds in then to the IT support technician program, which starts in September, which is a fully fledged professional certification in IT and tech support, which is run on our Mona Valley campus. Um, we also then have a new program starting in September, literally just online today uh, in cybersecurity. And uh, we'll be doing a, a full webinar on this um, in the next couple of weeks where we'll be sitting down and talking to Joe O'Shea uh, and, and industry partners about our ICT programs because there's quite a lot happening uh, in that space. Uh, and also, um, I suppose the one thing we'll flag just in terms of the ICT programs for now is that we run three uh, software development programs within Kerry College. Uh, we run a level five QQI, uh, which is fantastic for school leavers who are coming out and they want to you know, look at the whole um, industry of coding and software dev. Um, and then we offer a progressional program for the very first time this year, a uh, software development level six uh, for people that have the level five or who maybe have a good bit of indus industry experience and want to achieve the level six with a view to going on to further study. Uh, that's also starting in September. Uh, and we continue to run our program as well with Code Institute uh, our Partners Code Institute, which we do a, an accelerated program which is focused on employment. That's a 20-week program. It's very accelerated. It's quite grueling, uh, but for, for career changers and job seekers that want to just accelerate their way to becoming a junior software developer, it's an absolutely brilliant opportunity. So uh, they're, th they're, th they're the, the courses that you should keep in mind in terms of um, uh, you know, the ICT programs on offer um, at Kerry College. Actually joining us this evening, and, and Paddy Walsh, if you can switch on your, your camera there uh, so we can we can see you. Uh, there you are. Paddy, I was a bit worried earlier because you were sideways on the screen and I, <laughs> I said to myself, I'm going to have to let him know. Paddy, switch on your microphone there I, as well. If you I don't was mind. going to say, I had this set up for something else today, John, and I had to have the camera actually uh, it's it's a, a different orientation and I wasn't sure whether I was the only one that was I was going to need maybe some IT support but uh, oh, yeah, well, do I, I, thought it, I, I thought it was really funny actually I thought if there's any man that can troubleshoot this it's going to be you Paddy you're very welcome to the program actually and I, I remember I was I think part of the recruitment process for the course last year and I met you uh, mm -hmm. as, as part of that uh, yeah. you're a computer science grad for UL isn't that right um, That's right, yeah. But, but, yeah. but you were doing something a bit different, though, when the pandemic hit. Tell us about that. I was, I was. So, yeah, just I, I was in UL from 2011 to 2015. Um, and I decided when I came out that I would go in a completely different direction. I was playing music. I was actually DJing all over the country uh, four or five nights a week uh, and loving it. Uh, but obviously then the, the pandemic and everything that followed hit in March. Um, and I always, had a, I always had an interest in IT. I always had a, a grow for it. I always had kind of a, a natural, we call it intuition or, or just flair for it. So um, I, I was looking in, I suppose, June or July for something to upskill in um, because I had the IT background and, and everything like that. I just wanted to maybe fill in the last four, the four or five years that I'd missed out. Uh, and I came across, uh, I came across the course and I remember distinctly having a phone call with yourself one afternoon and um, sitting down with yourself and Joe the following week. And then, you know, less than 10 months later, I started a, a job last Tuesday. I'm a, a week in a job today um, down. I'm, so I'm based in Limerick, um, living in Limerick and I'm working in County Clare, just about 30 minutes over the road. Um, with a really big Irish-based uh, healthcare company, so uh, it's been a it's been a crazy ten months since we sat across from each other like this. Uh, last August, it was. 
That's brilliant. You know what? These mm. are the stories we love to hear. And listen, mm. can I just say congratulations and well done. Thank Dr. you very much. much you, were, you were unsure about it at the time we had discussed it. And I think that's, had, something, yeah. that's something that I think a lot of people can relate to that, you know, before you make any decision, either whether you're making the decision yourself, Paddy, or you're forced to make the decision, there's always risk attached in there. And you're thinking, absolutely. if I make the wrong call here, like, am I going to go down a road that I don't want to go down? So um, mm -hmm. I suppose one of the big things with Kerry College is the courses are all relatively short. They're all skills focused and they get mm -hmm. you, they get you to the next level pretty quickly can i ask you what your experience of the course was um i had a really really positive experience in in kerry um you know you you hit the nail on the head there i was concerned i had a lot of questions which you duly answered for me much appreciated um I, I, you know and i i had a lot of kind of avenues that i i was exploring and things like that and i guess what drew me to kerry um and and what my experience ended up being was that it takes you from, from whatever level you're at. You know, there was 15 of us in, in my group uh, over the last 10 months, all at different skill sets. Some had never done IT before, some had the you know, software development and, and had worked in industry. Uh, but what really I took from the course was the practicality side of things. Um, having done the college route, um, it's very theory focused. You're talking a lot about what you're going to do, but you never actually physically do it. Um, and in fairness to Joe, the way the course was laid out, you're talking about it in the morning and you're actually physically hands on doing it in the evening. Um, so my experience from that point of view, it got me really ready for the job because I literally you know, finished in Kerry on a Friday and I was in Clare on the Tuesday. So I didn't have that much time. But, you know, in the last week, I've seen so much of things that are very familiar from the last eight months. So it's been very, it's been fantastic. Um, and I would say to anybody, you know, pick up the phone, John, you'll hate me, but pick up the phone <laughs> to John, send him in your concerns, uh, ask him, ask him all the questions. And, and Joe as well was fantastic with his time, uh, but no, fantastic. And as I said, it takes everybody from whatever level you're at, um, whether you're doing it years or whether you're, you're relatively new in the IT space, if you have an interest in it, uh, if you're that person that someone rings to fix the laptop or get the skybox going or, or whatever, whatever the thing is, it's, it's definitely well worth uh, looking into the IT support. Well, thanks Trainship. so much. And, and I was going to, you preempted the last question about what message you'd have for people. And that's it. Just pick up the mm. phone and give us a ring. And don't be Absolutely. shy about it. We deal with this every day. Can I ask you just a fun question before we finish up? Sure. What, is, what, is, what is the number one thing you would say to everybody that can't get a computer working or a TV working or a piece of tech working? What should you do first? Give us, well, the secret. <laughs> Give us the secret party. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It depends. I, I would plug it out and plug it back in again. <laughs> uh, and I know that's such a cliche, but that is... That is quite a lot of time. Um, you know, you're, you're looking at you're looking at something, and you might be an hour before you get to it, and it might just have resolved itself. Uh, I definitely, if I was messing with anything, and, and like I'm working on, you know, corporate systems now, and and big big data kind of servers, definitely don't do anything that you can't undo. Uh, or if you do change something, just remember what you've uh, what Write you've actually pressed, or <laughs> yeah, yeah take, a, <laughs> take a picture or something like that. But um, definitely, and and look, the other side of the course is Joe has it well set up that you get your you get your environments, you know, your your computers set up, but you can mess around. You're not physically working on a laptop that's you know going to break. You can just delete it and start again. Um, and, and definitely, uh, if you are inclined that way at home, you know, mess around, have a bit of fun, press a few buttons, see what happens. Um, but if someone rings you and there's a problem, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> don't, don't, don't <laughs> that's don't very, off. that's very I helpful. Turn, turn, turn it off and turn it back on again. I, I you know, I, I'm really hoping you'd say that because that's typically what I do. And I was, uh, yeah, it's, it's my number one thing. It sounds silly, but yeah, just plug it out and plug no, it back in and see what yeah, happens. Yeah, yeah, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. There's a science behind it. And yeah, if you get brilliant. a job, if you do the course, if you're lucky enough to get in and you do the course, just spend the next 12 months kind of figuring out a highly technical way of of telling people that you know what did you do to fix it oh i did a controlled shutdown and i, I did a, a reboot and a, a reconfiguration or something it's just you know yeah. just tell people uh make it look better make it make it sound yeah, like a big deal dress it up dress Hottie, it up, dress uh, it up. thank you so much for taking the time All out right. this evening it's really good to talk to you and i wish you the Likewise. very best in your in your career 
All right, Patty, thanks thank very you. much, John. Great to chat. Thank you so much. That's uh, Paddy Walsh there, who's a graduate of our IT support technician program, and he's one of our many success stories at Kerry College, and we're really proud of him, and we're delighted that he was able to move uh, from really not knowing what to do a year ago when the pandemic hit. It was almost trouble on top of trouble, wasn't it? You know, no job and also the pandemic, uh, to now starting a job with TTM Healthcare in Ennis and County Clare. Okay, now we're going to move on uh, from IT and tech to our social studies programs, and I'd like to welcome um, one of our team, Miriam Galvin. Uh, Miriam, uh, are you, I think, Miriam, we can't hear you. We, we, we can't see you, but we'll be able to hear you and we'll be able to see your slides, um, Miriam. So good evening to you. Good evening, John. I hope you can hear me. I can hear you loud and clear. So uh, good to talk to you this evening. So tell us a little bit about, uh, about these programs. Absolutely. And just say thanks as well there for the last tip. That's exactly what I do as well. Turn off the TV and turn it back on and hope for the best. Yeah, this evening what I'm going to do, John, is that I'm going to give you a quick overview of Applied Social Studies Level 5 and Advanced Social Studies Level 6. I'm then going to show you some clips of past students of ours, talk about progression and show you some photographs then of us having fun in the course as well. So uh, just to move on. The Applied Social Studies course at Level 5, this is a full, one year full time program offering an introduction to the theory and practice of social studies and psychology, aiming to increase awareness of the practical application of social psychological theory. Um, this course at Level 5 is delivered um, in Diddy Street and also delivered in the Stoll. As I said, it's a full time course and it starts in September and students who achieve this award at level five then do go on to progress, which I'll talk about now in a few minutes. I'm the coordinator as well for the level six advanced social studies and students acquire the knowledge, skill and competence to provide a range of services in a social and vocational rehabilitation context and or to progress to higher education and training. The Level 6 Advanced Social Studies course is offered in Dinny Street. It's full time and again, it starts in September. This is one of our students here and many thanks to Shane and the Department of Creative Arts for creating the videos for us. Hi, my name is Damien. I'm studying Social Studies with Psychology here in Kerry College. I'm really enjoying it. It's great to spend, spend time with fellow students of all ages here in, in a social setting and that the staff here are very friendly and approachable. No matter what your age or experience, you're going to enjoy it here, as I am. Hi, I'm John and uh, I'm doing a social studies course here on Denny Street in Kerry College. I'd highly re recommend it. Come in as a mature student and uh, love it here and uh, as I said I just highly recommend it anyone is thinking of going back to education um, definitely yeah it's been a, definitely a plus for me right? yeah. and uh, pick a favourite one I suppose psychology the substance use definitely and uh, all the tutors are sound get great help here Hi, I'm Cara Quinlevin. I'm currently doing the Level 6 Advanced Social Care so course with Counselling Studies. I previously last year did the Level 5 and Applied Social Studies. The Kerry College has one of the best atmospheres I've seen in colleges and the supports within the college are great, amazing, top-notch, best quality I've ever seen. And if you're looking to get into this area of study and looking to do courses, maybe not going into IT straight away or anything like that, I'd highly recommend this course and this college because it is top-notch. Hi, my name is Ida. I'm in Kerry College studying social care with counselling. I love two uh, modules about this course the most, which is person-centred planning and uh, boundary management. I'm using that in my work placement now, so it's really amazing. If you're considering a course to do, this is the one. Okay, just in terms of the students there that spoke to. So the first student was uh, Damien. Damien was um, a graduate of UL um, and he has an engineering degree. And he came to us last year and completed the level five um, applied social studies. 
John completed the level five social studies and went on um, and he's now undertaking the level seven applied social studies with the IT here in Tralee. Uh, the next student there was Cara. Cara uh, completed the level six um, advanced social care and she gained full employment um, in rehab care in Blineville as a result of her work experience there with them. And the final student that you saw there on the clip um, was Ida. Ida had completed the level five nursing studies, and then she decided to progress on to the level six um, advanced social studies. And she's now undertaking a level seven nursing studies degree with the IT in Trilly as well. So as you can see here, um, number one and number two are very relevant, relevant to the applied social studies. And so far as some of our students move on and get a job immediately as a result of completing the level five or level six um, qualification. And some do progress on then, the majority I would say do progress on either to the IT or to other universities to undertake psychology, sociology, youth work, youth and community work or social studies. Okay. So just to mention there, the level seven, as I say, is providing the IT and Tralee that students progress on to. I also have students this year who are progressing on to the Bachelor of Arts and Honours uh, degree in counselling and addiction course, which is provided, as I say, in the IT, other degree courses and employment options. If you have any questions, please feel free or whatever to contact the admissions office or to uh, contact us directly or leave um, some questions for me in the chat this evening. I'd really appreciate that. And now before I finish up, I just want to share some photographs of uh, past students. Um, this group of students um, visited Capnally last year. We really do try and build their team building skills throughout the year. So we visit Capnally and Bally CD Woods as well during the year, which is great fun. Really enjoyed it. And this is a photograph taken by the Kerry's Eye last year as well. I'm there with the red top on the right hand side. Um, and these are students at level five and level six. And we organized a seminar to highlight through um, health promotion, which is a module I teach myself to look at, um, I suppose, alcohol awareness. So we'd arrange spirit speakers from both statutory and voluntary um, agencies with us on the day. So there was an article in the, in the uh, Kerry's Eye, as I say. So before I want to finish as well, I do want to mention as well that this year we collaborated quite a lot with the pre-law department as well. Yvonne spoke at the very beginning. So the students um, availed of a range of workshops um, from TUSLA, Kerry Travel Development Project, the Southern Regional Drug Task Force, Probation Services, Irish Youth Justice and Counselling. I myself have a lot of experience on the ground working with agencies and it gave the students a really good insight into the various um, services and job opportunities as well that are out there. So I'm just going to shop, stop sharing now, Jan. Good, Miriam. Thank you so much. That was really, really good, Miriam Galvin from our staff. Thank you for that. That was very, very informative. Okay. Lovely images as well. Thank you. Thank you for joining us this evening, Miriam. And now uh, we'll move from social studies to our science programs. And we have uh, Teresa O'Brien and uh, Katie Sobicchio. Uh, I'm sorry, Katie, if I didn't pronounce that name correctly. It's, uh, uh, I'm, I'm often called anything from Hurley to Hurley. Um, you know, so I, I can kind of empathize, but Teresa and Katie from our staff, uh, we'll have you on now to uh, talk about our science programs and also just ahead, we'll be speaking with Ashley O'Neill, who did applied science as well with us. So looking forward to speaking um, with Ashling as well. So Teresa, how are you doing this evening? I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for having me, John. So I'm going to just share my screen with you. I saw a fleeting shot there of Tim Moynihan. We'll be speaking with Tim later on there. I think he turned off his camera just as well now, but you can head away there. So, Teresa, so thank you. Greetings from uh, Ballybunion. That's the background in the back here. So <laughs> I reside in Listowel, but I'm representing both the Listowel and Tralee campus, talking about the Animal Care Assistant course. This is a full time course and it's a course for those that are passionate about animals, especially those animal lovers and animal enthusiasts. It's a course that gives a broad range of hand-on skills, very practical skills to those that want to work in animal care with a wide range of animal species. Learners gain practical hands-on experience in veterinary nursing skills, first aid, animal grooming, animal welfare, anatomy and physiology and biology. In addition, the courses also encourage the development of core transferable skills, such as digital literacy, digital skills, ICT skills, communications and interpersonal skills. 
and also work practice is also a key part of the course where learners are encouraged to engage in real work to enhance their skills. So while we have classroom based activities, the work practice is critical to ensure that the learner really understands the world of animal care. So working in this industry is all about, you know, really enjoying working with animals. It's a fantastic industry to work in because if you're passionate about animals, you will always have a very high level of enjoyment and job satisfaction. In addition, we know from all our previous graduates, it's a very positive work environment when you work with animals. And we also know that about 61% of all Irish households own a dog, they cherish their pets. So this allows them um, to indulge in their animals. And we've seen that there's much greater indulgence in animals now, and that's even reflected around the COVID times. In terms of the Animal Care Assistant course, you can see we have in designated facilities for the animal care uh, community. Uh, we also work with a range of animals and various species. So we are, have different animal breeds there. And this is just giving you a glimpse or insight into the students here who are examining animals, dealing with welfare, grooming them, washing them, but this is just giving you a flavour of the skills that animals get. In addition, I suppose we've talked a lot tonight about opportunities. There are usually two routes that our learners go into. One is where they examine uh, careers. Some of our learners, about half of our class, typically go immediately into employment and into work. So examples of some career opportunities is where learners work in grooming parlours, boarding kennels, they might go into sort of doggy daycare facilities, pet shop and animal retail facilities. Some are fortunate enough to work in zoos, wildlife parks, working in pet farms and sanctuaries is also an opportunity for employment, as well as being involved with animal welfare organisations. And it's important to emphasise that some of our learners in the past have actually gone on, left the course to open up their own business and become immediately self-employed. We bring these guest speakers back just to then communicate their experience back to our learners. Uh, as I've mentioned, setting up a dog grooming facility is you know, one of the opportunities from our course. Some of our students go on to veterinary nursing. Those that love the sciences because they've developed a love of the science from looking at biology and anatomy and physiology, can move into the science subjects. We've had some learners, for instance, that have gone on to study biochemistry, microbiology, and have even moved into the pharmaceutical area as a result of doing this course. And some of our learners who are very enthusiastic about animal welfare issues have moved into animal welfare organizations and have gained employment with them. In terms of progression, there are opportunities for graduates to progress on to uh, MTU in Chile through the CEO application, where applicants have pursued from our animal care course, the biological and environmental sciences, the agricultural sciences, and what particularly a one that's very suited to our learners in the animal care course would be the wildlife biology. And there's also a very good course on uh, veterinary bioscience. Graduates can also go on to UCD to look at studying agricultural science and also progression is enabled to, to, through the IT such as Limerick, Dundalk, Athlone, for instance, and UCD. So I hope I've whetted your appetite. The world is your oyster if you move into animal care. Our learners thoroughly enjoy it. We have a fantastic team. Um, we have a vet. We have expert animal groomers, we have microbiologists, uh, scientists, we also have work experience, ICT and communications experts. We also have fantastic OLC facilities, which is a support organization which encourages the holistic development of our learners in the course. 
and we take you through the course and we guide you through to enable success. So I want to just emphasize that it's a team effort. We work as part of a larger group or organization that enable the success of our learners to either progress into the workplace or to work or to progress in to college to further um, advance their careers. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Any questions, please again, log on to the website. And if you have any questions for me, I can be contacted via John there. So thanks for listening. Very good. Thank you so much. Uh, that's uh, brilliant, um, Teresa. Uh, and, and you can stop uh, sharing your screen there now so we can go back. And we have Katie as well uh, uh, online. So Katie, good evening. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Good, very good. Uh, what do you have, us, have for us this evening? Uh, so I'm going to present on the Applied Science course. I'm just going to share my screen now. Let's start at the beginning. It's the best place to start. So I teach on the Applied Science course. It's the QQI Level 5 Certificate Major Award in Laboratory Techniques. The main advantage of the Applied Science course at Kerry College is that we facilitate students to learn all of the core science subjects, regardless of what branch of science or even engineering that they choose to go into through progression. These form the foundation of all these courses throughout the country. And I'm no engineer, but I know that the necessity of a solid foundation. Uh, so that will provide uh, students with a facility that they may not have got through their own leaving cert experience. The Applied Science course allows students to explore the field of science. This way students can determine themselves if this is the area of study for themselves before investing in another three or four years of um, third level education. Um, and we have lab skills where we study the applied part of the science, so the practical knowledge of procedures, equipment and laboratory protocol. We have nutrition, which is a really popular area of progression for a lot of our students. And then work experience where we uh, facilitate students to get hands on experience in laboratories or science related areas throughout the year. We also uh, do, do field trips. Obviously, hopefully it's going to be allowed this year with COVID, but um, to science industry that uses science. So that to, to just show the, the scope of different areas of employment where, where science has a part. Progression. So past students have successfully completed these courses here, which you can see range from uh, DIT and UCC. We also have currently have students studying in the Munster Technological University in a number of different courses. These include pharmaceutical science, wildlife biology and veterinary bioscience. We also have one student studying veterinary science in the Warsaw University of Life Science. So you can see our graduates um, are literally going all over the world. I know we have another couple in, um, in, uh, in England and one in Scotland. So employment opportunities. So why choose the science sector in the first place? So the science sector is a vital area of opportunity for employment and progression. The total life science sector across medical devices, pharma and bio in Ireland um, export more than 45 billion annually. It employs over 50,000 people directly and six of the top seven diagnostic companies reside in Ireland. Global players with substantial Irish operations include Abbott, Bayer, Beckton Dixon, Boston Scientific, Johnson & Johnson, Gilladant, Medatronic and Stryker. So you can see that there, this is only in, in one specific area of the science industry. This is not including the environmental science. Every big factory in the, across the country has to have an environmental scientist to ensure that they're not polluting the environment. So science can go through a wide variety. One of the largest areas in Ireland is the food science industry, which we know with our own Kerry Co-op uh, being a local company. Also, the one thing that, that should be emphasized here is that we've just gone through um, um, an area where a lot of people have lost employment during this uh, pandemic, but not the science field. The science field has expanded and it's one of the few industries that's actually expanded during this very, very difficult time. These are some pictures of some of my hardworking students doing various experiments over the year. Uh, we even had UCC came, came well before the COVID, UCC used to come down and do one of the labs with us um, where we would have PhD students doing a forensic lab with the students uh, to give them a wide variety. 
we ensure that our, our labs go between the food scientists, forensic science, um, and environmental science to give students a wide variety of experiences in the different sciences to see which one they're most interested in. Uh, so these are, this is just a quick snapshot of the applied science course, but if there's any further questions, direct them to John or at the end, and I'd be happy to answer them. That's great, Katie. Thank you so much, and um, for that for that input, really, really interesting. Um, I can speak for myself. It was never really that great at science, I have to say. I was always more of a danger to the other students when I was in the lab, but uh, I, I, I admire that whole area very much. Tell me, um, we have um, Ashling O'Neill, hopefully. Uh, I see her there just logged in, also at the beach. You're nicely coordinated. Ashling, if you could switch on your mic, uh, we'll just have a couple of quick words with you. It's lovely to have you here this evening. How are you? Thanks, I'm good, John. How are you? I'm very well, and it's lovely to talk to you. Tell me a little bit about your own story. So what were you doing, just very briefly, before you, you joined us at Kerry College? Um, so I previously graduated from a law, QQI Level 8 degree in UCC. So after graduating, I realised that a career in the world of law just wasn't for me. Unfortunately, a bit, bit late to realise, but anyway. Uh, so I decided I was going to start again and go back to college and do something completely different. So I'd always had an interest in science. And when I read about the applied science course at Kerry College, it just seemed perfect for me, really, because it, it allowed me to gain just one year experience of studying science without having to first commit to a three or four year long degree. And I guess this year has been just so beneficial to me. I've had such a positive experience at Kerry College. Um, I've gained a good foundation level knowledge of three of the main sciences, namely chemistry, biology and physics. And also I've gotten the opportunity to work in the lab at Kerry College, which of course is, which is of course very useful if you're going studying science. So not only all of that, but I also gained the assurance and confidence I suppose I needed really to now pursue a third level degree in food science. Um, so yeah, it's just it's just been a very positive experience overall. And I know that the skills and knowledge I gained this year will not only send me in this next course, but also in my future career. That's really good to hear. And you're, you're, you're putting it so very well. You're a brilliant ambassador for us, Ashling. Um, Thank you. Tell me, you've mentioned, you've mentioned, no, genuine you are. Um, we love, we love meeting students that come through our programs and stuff. And we're, we're terribly proud of everybody uh, that, that comes through all of our programs. You mentioned the food science route. Tell me about that. So that's your next step, is it? Um, well, hopefully, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I suppose... I always had an interest in science, but I was always veering more towards the biology and nutrition side of things. Um, so I, I think food science just sparked my interest. I was reading about different courses that I wanted to pursue. And in the applied science course, we studied nutrition. So I just seemed to have a natural flair towards that side of it and biology, of course, as well. So food science just seemed to be a good, I guess, not compromise, but, you know, a good way to get both the biology side and a bit of chemistry, of course, as well, and the nutrition side, so that if I wanted to maybe go on further to do a master's or something, I could, I'd have the choice of going more into the lab sort of setting in food science or the nutrition or dietetic side. That's absolutely brilliant. Um, tell me, um, what would you say to people that were in your uh, position a year ago? So, you know, sometimes, I don't know what it is, you know, I, I suppose I went to college very briefly, not about me at all tonight, but I went to college, did a degree and a master's and then ended up doing nothing like it afterwards. So, you know, I, I remember on my wedding day, my best man lambasted me for 20 minutes in front of my parents and everybody there saying, well done to Mr. and Mrs. Hurley he for spending you know, countless amounts of money on John's education for him to, which was, by the way, in hotel management and hospitality, for him to go off then and work in radio where he has no qualifications. So everybody was skitting at me. But like there is that thing, isn't there, where, where a lot of people go off and they do the four year degree like I did um, and then decide at the end of it, crikey, I, for, for whatever reason, I just can't see myself doing this. Right. And sometimes you can think. A, I don't want to put, if you're at home, I don't want to put parents or myself through the financial strain of doing it again. Um, I don't want to go off and do something wildly different. People will think that I'm crazy uh, or that I'm not together. But of course, all of that is silly, isn't it, really? So what, what advice would you give to people that have a previous qualification, maybe at, you know, level six or seven or eight, and maybe two qualifications, and they're saying to themselves, okay, I think I need to change tack. What would you say to them? I guess... <laughs> 
don't be afraid of going for what you want. I know myself when I finished, I graduated in 2019 and I kind of took a year then to try and figure out what I wanted to do. I was like, am I being silly wanting to go back to college and do something completely different after already having spent three years getting this degree? But at the end of the day, if it's three or four years to get the job that you want an extra three or four years than maybe the the other three or four years that you might have spent doing something else isn't it worth that rather than going into a job that you're not really passionate about to think 20 or 30 years down the line why am I putting myself through this why did I put myself through this for all these years when I know I don't have the passion or the drive for it I guess I kind of just talked to myself and I was like you know what it's better off I'm better deciding now that I don't want to do it rather than regret it years down the line having wasted so much time and draining myself doing something I don't enjoy you know mm -hmm. so I guess mm -hmm. just go for what you want and don't be afraid and <laughs> I know people will people have this like misconception that they have to decide what they want to do straight away and I mean when you're 17 or 18 doing your leaving cert how do you know what you really want to do when you haven't gone out there and tried other things because the chances are you won't have worked in anything or if you have it'll be something very general not specialized so you don't you don't know what you want until you try and i guess try and try again if you fail fail better and you'll get there in the end you're quite inspirational, I have to say, and uh, thank you for all that. That's really good because it's lived experience from you. You're not you're not speaking theoretically or speaking from lived experience. I suppose the really good thing as well, Ashling, is that the courses in Kerry College are short and they're condensed and it's a year so you can explore your next choice in a year. You can decide to get a really valuable skill set on a course for employment in a few months, in 9, 10, 11 or 12 months, which makes the whole thing quite accelerated, doesn't it? So, uh, no, thank you so much for coming in this evening, um, Ashling. I wish you the very best in your career. I know you'll do absolutely brilliantly. I'm hearing really good things about you from all the faculty. So, you know, they're all saying great things about you. So uh, we wish you all the very best and we might catch up again in a future webinar. Uh, you're very interesting to talk to. So thank you, Ashling. Thank you. Thanks very much, John. Not, not a problem. That's Ashing O'Neill there from uh, our Applied Science program, uh, doing very well at another example of, of, I guess, how Kerry College can, can change lives uh, and move you on to the next level. Now, uh, we are going from science to, to the outdoors, and uh, we are heading to Kilorglin, um, to Kapanalee, to Kara Lake, to Ula West, all these places uh, that almost seem like they're from the Lord of the Rings, but the topography of this place certainly does look like it's Middle Earth. Uh, Brian O'Flaherty, a Galway man, lovely to talk to you. Uh, you're very welcome. And you're here to talk to us this evening a little bit about the outdoor programs, but particularly a really interesting new program on offer at Kerry College this year. Good evening, John, and welcome to everyone and fair play to you for staying with us this late in the evening. Um, as John said, my name is Brian O'Flaherty. I'm senior instructor in Kapanalee, the National Outdoor Education Training Centre. Uh, so this evening, what I'd like to talk to you about is the two outdoor instructor programmes uh, available in Kerry College Outdoor Campus, the Ecology and Practical Fieldwork Skills and our newest course, Scuba Dive Instructor Course. Okay, so I'm conscious of the time and I could talk about these all week. <laughs> can you see that there? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's perfect. We can see it perfectly. Excellent. Right. Excellent. Okay, so um, at the uh, outdoor campus for Kerry College, we have two instructor training courses. The first one is an industry course. Um, it's been described as life changing, and could also be described as zero to hero. So you can come into um, the outdoor campus with a little bit of experience or no experience and in the first year we'll say 47 weeks you'll be trained in first aid kayaking rock climbing power boating um, communications team building you'll do all of uh, these skills and you'll get up to instructorship level uh, in some of the disciplines not all and um, they just take a little bit of time to consolidate your experience and your skills in order to progress to uh, instructorship level. This course is kind of geared toward uh, people who want to get into the industry and our graduates uh, after the work experience module quite often they're they're kept on 
um, in the places where they've done their work experience and uh, quite happily work there. After that, then, I suppose with a lot of instructors, what happens is people go and they work in the industry, they travel with these qualifications. Uh, Irish qualifications are renowned worldwide as being quality, uh, excellent instructors. And after a number of years, maybe they come back and they want to progress on a little bit. So we have our next advanced outdoor instructor training course, which is a level six QQI level six course. And what we find is people doing the level six, um, they've worked in the, in the industry for a while and the level six instructor training course kind of bridges the gap between the purely practical and the, the theory, the, the teaching and the learning. And it, it bridges that gap to maybe a bit more of an academic route. And a lot of our graduates, or some of our graduates, have progressed on to do the BA in Outdoor Learning in Tralee or the BA in Outdoor Education up in Castlebar. Um, so the, that's those two courses. And so this is our location. This is Captain Ali here. Um, oh, I'll just go back. Now, I've been lucky enough to travel the world and work in various different outdoor centers. And without a shadow of doubt, hand in my heart, I can safely say as a location, and, and John said, Lord of the Rings. I mean, it is a stunning location. We are so lucky. We have the lake there in the left-hand side. We do our sessions. The bigger lake there in the right, as you look at it in the photograph, uh, we do some touring there, we do windsurfing, sailing, not part of the course, just over the mountains. Uh, world renowned surf beaches and to the left a bit off screen you can see the mountains in the background so our mountain skills is part of our uh, year one course and your mountain leader training will be part of the level six course and no better location um, it is the outdoor capital of Ireland as John said I'm a Galway man and when I turn the corner to drive down to Captain Lee every morning my heart soars. It's just such a spectacular place. Never get bored. Never get bored. Now it does get a bit bleak in February and uh, yeah there's no such thing as bad weather just bad equipment and luckily enough you're provided with um, personal protective equipment that should allow you to learn with ease throughout the winter months. So yeah they're, they're the uh, two outdoor courses and I can take questions later on those. Now, moving on to the ecology and practical field work skills. Again, I have to say it again, location, location, location. All right, Killarney National Park. You, you learn biology, plant science, plant identification, ecological field techniques, um, permaculture. Now, permaculture uh, is, is a very much growing in this country. I mean, farming practices have to change. We hear every day in the news about emissions farming practices. So when people do this course, yes, it, they can progress on. Uh, they would look at wildlife biology in tree or zoology. Uh, I know some people think, oh, I'd like to be a park ranger. And there's a huge increase in um, employment there as well. There's a big recruitment drive from national parks to uh, recruit more rangers. But there, there, there are so many other options. Uh, you can get into the agricultural side. Um, the world is your oyster. And again, no better place than Killarney National Park Education Centre, right on your doorstep, world-class ecosystems. You have the mountains. Now, we're all aware of the devastating fire over the past couple of weeks, and um, that's that has presented an awful lot of problems, but luckily the park is big enough uh, that uh, it allows study in various other habitats. Deep glaciated lakes, um, you know, Muckrus Lake there, second deepest lake in Ireland, 272 foot deep, contains the Arctic char, uh, an Arctic species of fish, you know, just absolute unique flora and fauna. So that's my lovely link there for uh, deep lakes to diving. So rolling out this year is Killarney National Park, snow covered mountains. So this year we're rolling out uh, our scuba diving instructor course. Now, uh, John, just so you know, I, two and a half hours ago, I was in the waters of uh, Castle Gregory there diving. I thought I'd share that with you. Um, again, look at that stunning location. World class, Jacques Cousteau. 
You're trying to make us jealous, Brian. I think, <laughs> and, and, and you're doing a, you're doing a great job. I'm just starting to thaw out, but it's okay. <laughs> um, I don't know if anyone's heard of Jacques Cousteau, world famous uh, scuba diver, marine biologist. He cited this location that we're looking at here as one of the best dive sites in the world. Um, what a special place. Those islands there, Ilantanig, the Maharees, um, is such a great opportunity here to dive in these locations. And our aim is to uh, bring people in from uh, little or no diving experience and bring them up to instructor level. Now, I will add, um, these courses may be life-changing, um, as some people have said, but they they require a lot of commitment. You know, whether it is the outdoor courses or the ecology course or the diving course, physical fitness is is a has its part to play here. Um, you know, it, it is challenging. It is absolutely challenging. Uh, night navigating in February when there's snow on the ground, it's not for everyone. Uh, diving out in the Maharese in uh, cold temperatures, not for everyone. But if you put in the effort, you get through the course, your reputation as a graduate from Kerry College Outdoor Campus, that will follow you, okay? Um, it's, it's known throughout uh, Europe and in certainly in locations I've worked throughout the world. If you can do these things in Ireland, you can do them anywhere. So we, we expect a high standard and we work to a high standard. So anyone thinking of uh, coming on the course, absolutely rewarding. All four courses, absolutely rewarding. Highly recommend them. And uh, hopefully I look forward to seeing some of you in uh, September. So that's it. That's great. Brian, thank you so much. Uh, Brian O'Flaherty there from our Very National Outdoor Education and Training Campus. And Brian, we'll skip on because I'm uh, the, the best of Absolutely, my... Yeah, ability. I'm aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, the people looking at the watch going, God, it's running over a little bit. But Brian, yeah. have, a lo have a lovely evening and we'll catch up face-to-face uh, -face hopefully soon. When everything, Brilliant. Um, Thanks a million, John. Best of luck to everyone. Not, not at all. And thank you, Brian. Uh, Brian Flaherty there. Brian O'Flaherty. Now, uh, next, we are going to go to one of our newest uh, members uh, of the Kerry College team, uh, Kieran O'Killon. And Kieran uh, is uh, well, a new member to the, the campus uh, team this year. And Kieran is going to talk to us a little bit about two programs that he's involved in. Uh, one has uh, an engineering and electronic technology focus, and the other is uh, got a carpentry and construction studies uh, focus. Kieran, you're very good. Good evening to you. How are you doing? Thank you. Uh, very well. Thanks very much, John. That's nice uh, to have so you just, Thank you very much. Uh, I'll just share my screen with you there now. Absolutely. Started. And uh, you can take that away. Thanks, Kieran. Perfect. Okay, so thanks everyone. Um, welcome. Uh, so my name is Kieran. Um, I'm the engineering teacher here in Kerry College. Um, I'm going to give you a bit of a breakdown into uh, the engineering electronic technology course, as well as the carpentry and construction studies course. Uh, so just as to start um, a bit about myself, I, I'm actually a past pupil, same as Colin Harty a while ago, a past pupil of Kerry College myself. Um, went through, did the engineering course here, and then I progressed on to UL to do um, an engineering teaching uh, course up there. So uh, same as Colm, I've come full circle back to back to where we started. So um, yeah, so so the focus of our courses are, are progression. It's it's developing the skills and knowledge and kind of competency that that will prepare students uh, to go on to third level. But it doesn't kind of stop there. It's it also gears uh, learners to for employment and as well as apprenticeships as well. Um, so, so just as a, a few examples, I suppose, of, of um, how students have progressed through this course. So um, if you get your QQI level five, you, know, you, you will um, have the chance to apply to, to engineering courses in, in MTU, like civil, agricultural, um, manufacturing engineering, um, and also mechatronics as well. Um, one of the, the students that was on my course in, in a few years ago has actually managed to get a master's now in mechatronics. So, uh, you know, there are there are pathways available. Um, other students that come from the construction studies course will have progressed on to GMIT to study the advanced woodwork and sustainable technology course. And uh, recently there's a new pathway opened up to, to the course that I studied up in UL there, the Bachelor of Education in Materials and Engineering Technology. So there are plenty of pathways available there. Uh, so just a little bit about the courses. Uh, so they're both very practical based courses. They're, they're hands on, they're in the workshops uh, most days of the week. So they are, they are fairly um, intense that way. Uh, what we're trying to do is to develop the, the skills, knowledge and competency um, that are suitable for students to progress onto, onto third level. 
Uh, but you know the, these kind of skills they will teach people um, you know, if they want to go on to employment or to apprenticeships as well these skills will stand to them um, in those areas as well. Um, so to look uh, more specifically at the carpentry course so the kind of modules that you would study are building construction, wood fabrication, furniture making, design skills, architectural drawing all very practical things. So it'll bring you from, you, you learn about different concepts, you'll, you'll learn how to, to draw. You'll then be given a project to, to um, design yourself and then go ahead and manufacture your own design inside in the workshop. Um, as well as that, you'll study some building services, work experience and, and uh, communications as well. Um, so just as a few examples of students work there, you know, you, um, on, over on the left here, so students would have been given an assignment um, where they have to design and then construct um, uh, roof trusses for, for a scale model roof truss for a house. And then they'll, they'll get experience in, um, in, in felting that and putting in um, the lats and all that stuff as well. Uh, so it's, it's very, very practical work, you know, it's, um, yeah. So uh, in the middle here, we can see an um, example of uh, furniture that students will make. So they'll go ahead and design this in, in their architectural drawing class and they'll, they'll go into the workshop then and, and manufacture that as well. Um, so to look at the engineering course then, uh, so the kind of modules that students will be studying are, are workshop processes, workshop theory. So they'll be learning all about um, the theoretical and the practical side of, of, use, of using the workshop. So to learn all about the health and safety of, of using machines as well. Um, so that there's computer aided drawing as well, um, electronics, control systems, mechanics, all very interesting um, modules. So they're all interlinked as well. So what, what students will be, will be given is a, a project to do. And so they have to, to design that project first and then using all of uh, things that they learned in electronics and control systems, they'll go ahead and they'll design their own little um, robot or, or whatever kind of project that they're given. Um, they'll go into the workshop then and construct that, that robot and we can test that in, in the classes. And it's, it's a very, very interesting uh, kind of a project that students do. Um, so they'll also study mechanics, maths, communications and work experience, all very, very relevant modules that, that students will need if they're planning on progressing uh, to third level. Uh, so just as a few more examples of students work there. So we have these, these are um, projects that our students this year have built uh, with the limited time that we had. So you can see that they're, they're, they're fairly um, intricate details. So there, there's um, a lot of work I in, gone into designing a few of these um, a lot of concepts learned in electronics and control systems and you know, they learned how to program these, these robots so that they'd read, you know, they can follow uh, this white line around the black table and that's, that's all their own doing from their own programming and their own knowledge. So it's, it's a very um, interesting way, I suppose, of, of uh, creating a project and seeing it going from design all the way up to manufacturing and finishing these kinds of things. So it's, um, it's very kind of a fulfilling course for, for, for students. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, my bit. Thanks for listening. Um, and I'll take any questions after this. If you like. That's great. Uh, Kieran, what was that device? If you go back a slide there, what is that device sure. uh, with the mobile this, phone? Uh, oh, sorry. Yes, I can barely see this with my, my screen set up here. So <laughs> over on the right hand side here. Yeah. So that's that's a, a basic phone holder that students uh, designed and made inside in the um, inside in the workshop. A uh, very basic thing, but it, it, it gets students to kind of um, think about uh, different measurements of designs of their phone and things, and then apply that to, uh, to their own designs and, and, and they manufacture that inside in the workshop then as well. That's great. You have a great passion for it. And it's, it's truly creative. It's great to see things that, that are in your, in your head uh, take, uh, come to life, you know, and, and, yeah. and work through the engineering problems associated yeah. with the challenges. Uh, Kieran O'Kulan, thank you so much for joining us this evening. And uh, we'll certainly to, to forward on any questions relating to, uh, to your area. So uh, we'll move quickly to Ellen Maloney, who's standing by. Uh, Ellen uh, is going to here to tell us a little bit more um, about our childcare programs um, at, at Kerry College. So, um, Ellen, if you can switch on your microphone there. Um, hi, and hi, how, very well. And also, uh, hopefully, we'll be speaking as well to Daniel Kelleher, uh, who is a graduate of one of our, of our uh, childcare programs as well, uh, just after we speak with Ellen. So, you can uh, share your slides there, Ellen, if you'd like to. And uh, I'll let Where's you take it, it away. Just not letting me put on my camera if the whole oh. is stopped. Ah, that's okay then. It I can still it, share though, can't I? You can still share and uh, you, can do the, you can do the voiceover over it. Okay, and, no problem. And that. So, nice to have you with us this evening, Ellen. Thank you very much. It's great to be here and hi to everybody. Mm -hmm. and yeah, so I'm we going can... to be talking about um, 
two courses, childcare and SNA. And the first one I'm going to talk about is childcare. So can you see my screen, Kihan? Okay, so uh, childcare level five is a very practical based course and it helps you uh, learn all about how to observe children in their natural environment in the earlier settings and take observations and assess a child's development and see basically if a child is developing uh, to the same level as their peers, are they meeting their milestones? And you'll also learn how to create an intervention in the event that they're not meeting their milestones. And you'll also be learning about different special needs that you'll be working with and also how to um, work with children who have these special needs. You'll also be able to use your creative skills for some of the modules like storytelling and um, for creative arts. You'll be doing art activities and lesson plans. As well as that, you'll be learning a lot of practical skills like um, feeding, making bottles for babies, checking temperatures, learning about different care routines, as well as the legislation that guides the earlier sector. As well as that, you're going to be able to go on work experience after you know, towards the second half of the year, which is really great opportunity for you to put all the skills that you've learned to practice, as well as getting a feel for working in the industry and also making industry links, which is really important for you. And at this point, once you've finished your level five, you can use your certificate to go and gain employment uh, where you will be under supervision, or you can continue on and focus on your level six early childhood care and education. And this will give you the skills and the qualifications to work autonomously in the childcare settings. So some of the modules that will assist you in these managerial roles will be Social, legal and health studies will help you learn how to engage with TUSLA. It will help you understand the policies and procedures that are necessary for the early childhood um, sector. And it will also help you learn the importance of um, planning and implementing curriculum based on ASHTER, which is a very important curriculum framework in Ireland for the early years, which you learn all about. And you'll be focusing on special needs as well. So a lot of these modules are building on the knowledge that you've learned from your level five. And so again, the work experience is really good uh, opportunity to make connections in the industry, as well as putting all the skills that you've learned to, to practice. So once you've completed your level six, you're then in the position to either work in an autonomous um, level in you could have your own business or you could work in as a manager or a supervisor in another setting as well either in the early years or in a crash whichever you prefer you could also go on to higher education as well so now a quick overview of the special needs assisting course this is going to give you the skills and the competencies to work as a PA or an SNA, and you're going to learn so much about many different disabilities, the characteristics of these disabilities, as well as the skills to um, work side by side with people with disabilities, whether they're physical disabilities or intellectual disabilities, whether it's general learning disabilities or specific disabilities such as dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyscalculia, dyspraxia. Some of those are more common than others and you may recognize some of those and you'll be learning all about that um, in this course as well. You'll also be learning how to apply person-centered focus for care with these people with different disabilities and how you always lead by their example and put their needs before anything else. And just like the other course, you have the opportunity to do work experience there to practice your skills and get a feeling of working in the industry. You can go on then and continue to your level six if you want. And the level six award is inclusive education and training. And again, this builds on the knowledge and skills that you have gained in level five. And you'll also be looking, learning more about mental health awareness, disability awareness, and you'll be looking at the rights of people with disabilities to access education, whether it's mainstream or special needs schools, whether it's in a mainstream class with an SNA or 
what kind of benefits or entitlements people with disabilities have going into higher education and also employment. And you'll be learning about the legislation that um, supports people's rights with disabilities to be included and not to be disadvantaged by their disabilities. And you'll also have some you know, very interesting learning on different assistive technologies that people with disabilities uh, have the right to access in education and employment as well. And as well as that, again, work experience gives you the opportunity to put these skills to the test and really get a feel for working with people with additional needs. And it's such a it's such a rewarding area to work in. So and just like childcare, they're both really rewarding. So that is it in a nutshell. I hope that you enjoyed that and the pictures that went along with it just gave you a brief view of the activities and the outings that we've been able to go on. Not this year, unfortunately, because of coronavirus, but hopefully, again, we'll be able to do that next year. That's really good. Uh, Ellen, thank you so much for joining uh, us. I know yesterday when we were doing our, our tech check, you were worried about the, uh, the, the Wi-Fi and the broadband. It's good yes. to see that it's worked anyway, which is, a, which is a great thing, except we can't see you, but you're definitely there. Thank you great. so much for that, Ellen. And uh, that was really, really informative. Uh, hopefully, Danielle uh, is with us there. You can stop sharing your screen, Ellen, if okay, you don't mind. Uh, thank you. Not at all. Uh, and Danielle, I see is on screen now. Hi. Danielle, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I, I'm very well. I'm very well. I'm telling you, I was anticipating, Danielle, loads of technical problems tonight, but there have been very few of them, so I'm delighted. I'm <laughs> fierce nervous. Uh, Danielle, you are a really great example of, uh, well, first of all, you're a really excellent student, I'm told, by a number of the faculty there. You'll be mortified now that I've said that. Oh, but that's also, so kind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know I've heard that from a number of, a number of your teachers, but I've also, uh, I suppose, I'm aware that you're a really great example of progression within the Kerry College system. You started back in 2019 doing the ECCE, the Early Childhood Care and Education Program. Um, tell us a little bit about your decision to do that. Like, why did you decide to get into that? And then why did you continue to go on to the level six? Tell us a bit well, about that. I always worked in retail um, and I enjoyed it, but I always wanted to work with kids. Um, the reason I kind of held back in going to college was because um, I've been out of education for so long. I'm a mature student and um, I didn't really feel like I had the support I needed in school. Like I really struggled with maths and I never received the, the help I needed. So that kind of, you know, had a negative effect on my learning and my experience in school. And I was kind of worried college would be the same, but thank God it wasn't. Um, over the past two years, the level of support from the college has been amazing. Like the teachers are so friendly and they really do their best to provide you with the help and support that you need. Um, my first year was completed in the college and then this year has been online, but the support stayed the same. Like you can email the teachers, um, they offer private meetings um, with you in breakout rooms. Uh, you can send drafts of your assignments, um, which is really beneficial. Like you can, you know, any questions that you have, they'll answer and they provide the support that you need. Um, this year we couldn't go on work experience, unfortunately, because I absolutely loved that last year. But um, the college were brilliant and set up a virtual work experience for us. So we still had the opportunity to gain the experience we needed, which was absolutely brilliant. Like, And um, I'm finishing my level six now. I didn't think I would go back to do level six, but once I had such a good experience doing my level five, I said, sure, why not go back again? So um, I just honestly, I just can't thank the Kerry College enough like for the hard work and their support and they've just been so kind. And uh, the experience has been absolutely amazing. I'm just, I'm delighted I went back. It's just been positive from start to finish, like brilliant. Um, uh, I have to say now, just um, this is the reason why I guess we're, we're in the business that we're in, we're in the, the service. Just listening to you there, it's just incredible. Uh, it's a yeah. pity as well, isn't it, that and there's so many friends that of mine and uh, people that I know over the years that their experience of school, be it primary or secondary level, defines what they think of education and training, doesn't yeah. it? If oh, had, God, yeah. If, if they've had a negative experience, it really, it runs deep with people, doesn't it? It really does. Yeah. And you're describing it there so well. You're so articulate about it and you describe it so brilliantly. Is there anything, can I ask you, I'm itching to ask you this question, uh, because you came into the, the course with maybe some doubts and maybe some fears, was there anything during the course that you you discovered about yourself that surprised yourself that you thought, hold on a second, this is actually a bit easier than I thought, or, you know, um, it, to surprise yourself in a positive way about, you know, your experience? 
Oh, it definitely has. Like I came in with no confidence. And then like, it was just like, what am I going to do if I can't do this? Because of secondary school, it was just like, oh, it's because you're not paying attention or, you know, you're not taking it seriously. And that wasn't the case. I was fine with everything else. It was just like maths. And then it was like, what if there's a module that I just, I just, I can't do it. What do I do? Am I going to have to drop out? But the teachers were absolutely amazing. Like, oh, I just, I get on so well with them. Like I'll actually miss them when I'm gone. Like, oh, they were absolutely brilliant. Like, and then them talking, she was willing getting the feedback. They're there, you know, it's not you just thinking, oh, I'm all right with doing this. They're giving you feedback the whole time, telling you, you know, where you're going really well and where, the, you know, they support support you where you need it. Like, and oh, absolutely fantastic. Like a final thing I want to ask you is that if you have somebody there now listening to us tonight, we have a lot of people listening in live at the minute and we'll mm-hmm. be posting this on YouTube tomorrow. Um, if there's a mature learner listening to you tonight now, like um, what would you say to them? A mature learner that's thinking, now nah, I've missed the boat here. I, there's no way I can go back to college. No, it's never too late. It's never too late. Like to think in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be finished and I will finally have my dream, like dream job working as an early years educator. Like I can't wait. Oh, it's never too late. Go out there and do it. And Kerry College are absolutely amazing. And I didn't feel, you know, I'm the oldest in my class. You're never kind of everyone's treated the same which is lovely and I get on with all age groups like there's 18 year olds 19 year olds in their 20s I'm not going to say how old I am but like you know I'm just saying oh it was absolutely brilliant it was I, I loved it it was a great experience well uh, we're dead proud of you and uh, we're delighted thank for you, you. thank and you we, we you're a, you're, a, you're a great example of progression and also of the mature student route as well so listen yeah. we wish you every success in the future i know you're going to just nail whatever you you, you do because you seem really focused and really determined and uh, and now confident as well in your abilities which is very important yeah. uh, thank listen, you very much daniel <laughs> thank you for talking to us this evening we wish you no all the problem good luck everyone thank bye you. um and now from danielle and what a great story uh, to another of our Kerry college colleagues to talk about our business and admin programs i'd like to welcome mary jo staunton mary jo how are you i'm good john can you hear and see me i can and, and it looks like you're back at the beach which is lovely yes <laughs> lovely, for lovely for you so we have a, we have a range of of business and admin programs mary joe and you you'll be telling us about them quite a range that will suit people to progress but also uh, i suppose to get work to find employment absolutely john yeah so i'll just do a, a little whistle stop tour i suppose on this um i suppose the first thing first thing is to say that um i'm an instructor with medical administration in mona valley campus i've been there now for over 20 years but i have some involvement across all the campuses now with the admin courses in kerry college um uh, the any admin courses that you would do with Kerry College, uh, they're as a lot of the other people have alluded to, they're uh, level five, major award level five, eight modules, and you get a certificate in office administration. I suppose the key thing is in the courses here, what we're looking for is we're looking for people to gain employment. We want to give them skills, knowledges, and knowledge but practical skills that they need to start in this area okay very much a focus on like the uh, keyboarding skills and other skills that I talk about as we're going through it so um, we have administration courses running over four campuses so in Listowel you have office admin and medical admin in Mona Valley campus you have medical admin Clash Road you have office admin and legal admin and in Killarney you have the office admin so I mean we've got a range we've got most of the county covered uh, and obviously um, the the days where maybe people had to travel into main centres to do um, courses, they're kind of gone. They've got, you know, more options in their lo- locality too, which is a great thing. Um, again, just refer to the previous uh, slide there. We had office administration, legal administration and medical administration. And um, all of the courses are, um, they're all of the same duration. So they're all of 41 weeks. They start in September and they last until June, normally the beginning of June. Um, I suppose the great thing is that out of the eight modules that you will cover, 
a number of them will be the same regardless of whether you're doing medical admin or legal or office admin. So you would be doing things like word processing, spreadsheets, customer service, and so on and so forth. Um, they are all common across the three programs. In some ways, they are different in one respect in that if you are doing, we'll say medical administration, um, we try to um, get the assessments to be like say assignments or exams to be tailored towards a medical administration scenario. So if you were doing a spreadsheets uh, exam, then a lot of the theme of the exam will relate to the medical administration. Uh, if you're doing a legal administration, the spreadsheets exam will have a slightly legal tone to it. OK, so you, you have two uh, positive things. The, the, the modules are generic, but the learning within those modules can be very tailored to whatever stream that you're on. OK, in addition to the eight modules that we run um, in each of the programs, I suppose I, I just mentioned that there's there are differences. So, for example, if you take medical administration, uh, medical terminology is a core module on that course that wouldn't be on the other two. Then, as well as that, you would do patient management software. So that, that would be the software that when you go into a GP practice, they click you as being present. And when you leave or if they issue you, you with them, um, we'll say some kind of receipt. That's the kind of software that we train you on. If you do the medical administration slant, then you're going to be doing a lot of, say, computerized accounts and invoicing and, you know, that kind of area. You And you'd be trained in, say, it could be Sage, it could be TAS, it could be Red Book but basically they're computerized accounts packages and lastly then if you're doing med medical administration you have some legal modules and on top of that you use legal software so like I said we have a lot of common modules but we also have the modules and the software that makes each of the streams kind of different from the other streams okay um, I suppose they all have one thing in common in that we have work experience. In all of the office administration courses, uh, we have a huge amount of work experience and the work experience is a minimum of two months. And uh, that would normally start kind of um, October-ish, maybe the beginning of November and would work all the way through your program. So you're constantly learning, you're practicing it and work experience, learning and practicing. That, that's how we how we run it. Again, medical administration, your placements might be with the HSC, consultants, GP surgeries, dentists, and so on. Legal admin uh, often complete their work experiences in solicitor's offices, but also in places where there is a strong legal overtone to it, even though they mightn't be solicitors. And then office admin is, as it says, it's a general office admin course, and you can complete your work experience in any setting where there's an office. It could be a school, an insurance company, and so on and so forth. Now, there's nothing to say that if you're doing the office admin slant that um, you couldn't do your uh, work experience in the HSC, but these are only just examples of where you might do your work experience. And again, um, it's a huge part of the course, and as others have alluded to, um, it's a key driver in uh, your, your uh, employment situation at the end of the course. It would be quite common that if you are doing work experience, say for argument's sake, in a GP surgery, that that's where you could end up working because you um, that's where you, you have the experience. It doesn't always work there, but a lot of the time, that's the way it works out. Um, like I said, they're October, to the end of October till May, roughly. Um, and again, it would be a great advantage if you came into the course having secured the work experience, um, because so many people, you know, are looking for it at the same time. However, if you don't, we will give you guidance on how best to go about securing that work experience. Um, again, in terms of outcomes, the placement rates, the uh, employment is good. Again, a lot of it could be Kerry, Cork, Limerick, obviously, because you have Listowel running the course and so on and so forth. And beyond, people can move to Dublin, London, and so on and so forth. But a lot of it would tend to be Munster-based. Um, just as another option, just to mention there that if 
um, if employment isn't your thing, you come to the end of the course and you say, maybe I'd like to take my uh, education and training a little bit further, you could go into the level six office management and that is running in the Clash Road or the Killarney campus. Um, the profile of the learners always very interested, interesting across all the campuses. Obviously, people have to ha be of school leaving age, but we get a range of people there, as, as some of the previous speakers alluded to, um, people from you know 17 to any age really. Um, you might have people who were um, caring maybe for parents or you know somebody who might have had a disability and they are no longer in that caring role and now it's their time and they want to go back and go into an area that they always kind of were interested in or maybe they just want to try it out. People who were raising families and maybe they're of school going age or they just find themselves in a position now of being ready to, to go back and re retrain and re-enter the workforce. Um, they're um, people who change, maybe just want to change of careers. They're just, you know, for multiple reasons, don't want to be in the career that are, or, or maybe, maybe they do, but maybe health wise or physicality of it, they're not able to do it anymore. And of course, then you have people who are made redundant and take that time and say, yeah, it's, 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 this can be a positive thing and I, I will use my time to upskill. So there's a whole range of, of uh, learners and students there. Um, just to mention there that if people are doing uh, the uh, admin courses across Kerry College, that uh, you could be entitled to some funding. Um, it's just an area that you might look into. There's a training allowance that's paid to you every week, back to education allowance, uh, maybe a SUSE grant. In some cases, you might travel, you might qualify for a travel allowance or um, an accommodation allowance. And these are all things that obviously will make you, your road a little bit easier if you're not as worried about, you know, the financial pressure of being uh, out of the workforce for the bones of nine months. Uh, in terms of why, why would you want to do this anywhere in Listowel, Killarney, in Mona Valley or Clash? Uh, you have a lot of experienced and qualified teachers and instructors and tutors. Uh, we have a lot of, as I alluded to, kind of top of the range, state of the art, it's expensive, the, the software that we use in the courses. Uh, the extensive work experience, minimum of two months. There is a major focus on, on, in all the courses on CVs and cover letters, and we do recorded mock interviews. Now, I know some people find them a little bit tricky, but they're one to one and you're given feedback. And the, the objective is, as mentioned before, is to give you feedback to improve you and make you better, not to be, to be criticizing. Um, we also have a lot of contacts and links with industry in terms of employment because we've been doing this for quite a while. Like I mentioned, they're very good job prospects. And uh, like I said there, you can specialize in what area you'd like to go into, like medical, legal, or, or general office admin. But with the number of common modules, if you came to the end of the course and you said, right, I now realize that medical admin isn't for me, I would like to work in general office admin, then you have, you have enough of a background that opens that door to, uh, for you as well. Um, very good facilities, like we said, computers and so on and so forth. Funding options are good. There's no hidden costs for exams or materials and so on and so forth. Um, I suppose the other thing is that when you come into the admin courses, you're given a schedule of your assessments for the whole year. And you will know month by month exactly what's what's on the plan. When are assignments due? When are the, when are the exams due? And that is important because we recognize that people all have lives, just like we have outside of our course and our work. And it's important to, to be able to work to a schedule and know uh, what's coming up, when you're going, the work experiences, when is your downtime, and so on and so forth. Uh, we also have, as all the courses do, have learning supports available um, where necessary. So that's my whistle top uh, stop tour, John, for you. Thanks very much, Mary Jo, and uh, I'm going to move on to our next section, but thank you so much. That was really informative, and uh, I guess, you know, it just shows the range and the breadth and the depth of options that are available to people that want to go into an area, I suppose, Mary Jo, that's constantly in demand from an employment point of view, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. And like I said there, the great thing is that um, 
you are not pigeonholed. It's, it's a fear that people have sometimes when they go into a particular stream that they can't get back out of it, you know, but that doesn't apply in this case. That's brilliant. Thank you for your time this evening. I know we're running over slightly. Thank you for your patience as well, Mary Jo. So brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, that's Mary Jo Staunton there, um, uh, one of our um, campus team, uh, who is the medical um, uh, medical administration instructor at the Mona Valley campus and um, works as part of the team delivering our office administration uh, and business programs. And from Mary Jo, uh, who deals with Office of Men and Medical herself, and we're keeping along a, a similar line with Caroline Cashel. And Caroline is joining us now. Uh, and Caroline, uh, you're waiting patiently for a long time. Thank you, John. <laughs> <laughs> and thank I you thought for... I'd, I'd get in before the nine o'clock news, but... Yes, I, I, I will. I'm yes, the now. <laughs> I, I, might, I might miss the weather myself uh, this evening. Um, Caroline, you're going to talk to us a little bit about the healthcare programs um, at Kerry College. Yeah, I'll just. My slideshow is after disappearing, so I must no, find it. No, it's not. It's really there. It's 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 actually there. You'll just. You'll OK, OK. <laughs> Can you see it, John? I can't see it yet, but it might be it might be just it might be just about to start. Um, no, there's nothing showing up yet anyway. It's a good job. It's a good job it's not live on radio anyway. Sure, look, it's 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 okay. We could play a song or something while we wait. Mm -hmm. So just the share button and then you just select the Yeah. S select the can you see uh, it John? presentation no there's nothing coming up for me here now um yet i can't see any of your slides okay let me just go back out yeah but you can talk through them if you want there if it, if it doesn't if you can see the slides yourself oh here we go okay. <laughs> we see your desk we see your desktop there now so um you'll be able to go into your um your powerpoint slides from there yeah that's okay it. is that okay that's perfect. Just hit the uh, the slide presenter view there at the bottom right of the screen yeah. next to where it says 83%. That mm -hmm. little guy there should. That's it. And then you go up to display settings and swap presenter yeah. view and you're good. Great. Okay. Well, good. Okay. So after all that, so my name is Caroline, as John said, and I'm involved in the healthcare programs in Kerry College. So the first program, um, I'll speak about is a course for progression and that is the nursing studies course and the nursing studies with maternity care skills. So the nursing studies course really is designed to offer the student um, a, a foundation year um, for those seeking entry to a, a degree in a university or an IT in nursing. Um, there's eight modules or subject areas and they um, are all designed to introduce students to, I suppose, the necessary theory and the practical skills, which, you know, are essential if somebody is going to, to work in a, in a care setting or environment. Um, so why complete a nursing studies course in Kerry College? Um, so number one, the QQI results from this course can be used to gain access to a nursing degree program. And in fact, there is other degree programs that there is also a link um, with, such as social care and early childhood studies. And just to show you the, the range of colleges in Ireland that do offer QQI places um, for the, uh, the various different types of nursing degree programs on offer. Um, and it's definitely, if you're interested, it is worthwhile checking each individual college website and you will be able to see exactly how many courses are on offer for QQI students in the different degree programs like general nursing, intellectual disability, midwifery and, and so forth. Um, second reason why you might decide to study in Kerry College on a nursing um, course. So if you are unsure about your career choice, so if you think that maybe nursing is for me, but I'm not 100% sure, I would definitely recommend doing the, the QQI Level 5 Nursing Studies course. It really gives you a great insight into what is the role of the nurse, you know, from classroom setting to where you'll acquire the theory and the foundation and in, in the practical skills, but then also the work experience placement, which really 
really offers an absolutely wonderful insight into what the day-to-day -day life is for you know a, a nurse um, or a care worker. Um, also, I suppose at the heart of what we do is the student and it's about supporting the student and helping the student fulfill their career goal and we would strongly encourage students to along with applying to all the universities and ITs in Ireland for a degree program also you know to apply to the UK for um, access maybe to a degree program there so we do support this process um, and we're very, very lucky to have established links with UK universities as well, you know, over the years. Um, one university that comes to mind is Southampton and they visit us every year um, in order to try and recruit um, Irish students onto their degree programmes in the UK. So fourth reason why you should study nursing in Kerry College, um, I suppose we are you know, very focused on all our students, but we also would get, you know, we would get different ages onto the course and we would strongly support mature students and strongly, uh, you know, acknowledge that it can be a big challenge for mature students to, to return to education, to change career. And um, so we do support them. Every teacher would offer, you know, extra support if they're finding assignments, coursework difficult. And we also have the help of a wonderful, I have to say, student support office that does offer that extra support for, for those that have been out of education for a period of time. Um, we also would offer career guidance and assistance with the CAO for all students and also for mature students, because mature students, if you're applying for nursing, you have to sit an aptitude test and we would help with that, that process. Um, reason five for studying nursing Kerry College. So I think the course prepares students so well for third level. You know, it introduces them to the skills of academic writing, referencing, researching and these just are essential skills for anyone embarking on a four-year degree program um, and feedback we would get from the MTU formerly the ITT and Tralee um, lectures is that our students are a step ahead you know in regards to they have that experience of how to put an assignment together how to research how to reference and of course they also have that foundation in clinical skills and the, the theory of, of nursing and care. Um, reason six, um, so having a QQI certificate in nursing studies allows you to work as a healthcare assistant and earn money while studying. And a lot of our students do this, whether they take up a course in Ireland, a degree programme or in the UK, you have that opportunity with the CERT to work as a healthcare assistant part time and earn that little bit of money, which is a wonderful advantage, I think. Um, so. Courses for employment then in relation to the healthcare department in Kerry College. And just to mention in relation to these courses, they are on offer in the Tralee campuses, the um, training centre, Dinny Street, and also in the Listowel campus. Um, so course for employment is healthcare support. And the healthcare support course on offer in Kerry College provides students with the necessary theory again and practical skills, both in class and in the clinical setting to ensure the student leaves the college as a safe, competent and empathetic care worker. And that's really what we want. That is our aim for our students, that as a healthcare worker, they are going into the work setting as a safe, competent and empathetic um, care worker. Um, why enrol in the healthcare support course for Kerry College? So again, number one, with our rapidly growing ageing population, which the prediction is that is going to increase even further over the next number of years. There currently is a huge, huge demand for healthcare workers across all healthcare settings, be it acute hospitals, long-term care settings, mental health, physical, intellectual disability care settings. Um, there is a huge demand. So employment prospects are, are, are really, really good um, there. Second reason, we are proud to offer students the opportunity to be taught by experienced nurses. We are very, very fortunate in Kerry College to have a number of healthcare staff teaching and from a variety of backgrounds. 
So again, we have midwife, emergency care background, care the older person, surgical, medical, intellectual disability backgrounds, endoscopy. We are really, really fortunate. And, you know, feedback from the students, and we really believe this really gives the students an invaluable experience, you know, having experienced staff from, from the different um, speciality areas. Um, third reason for studying healthcare support in Kerry College, ongoing student support for those requiring extra assistance or those out of education for a period of time. I think we have to note this because we do get a number, we get all ages, which is wonderful, post leaving cert right up to mature students. Um, but again, we, we have to acknowledge the challenge it is for people to return to education people that have been out of uh, education for a period of time and going back into it we do i have to say offer tremendous support to those students um, and again we have a fantastic student support office um, that, that provides assistance along with the teachers there reason four to study healthcare support in Kerry College to enhance employment prospects and completion of the course our modules are carefully selected so we we take planning very serious in Kerry College we plan our courses um, in conjunction with industry needs so we would link with industry and see what modules are best suited to the the course and what modules will enhance or improve I suppose employment prospects for our student afterwards um, reason five, over the years, we've established very, very strong links with um, industries um, in Kerry and further afield, you know, Limerick and Cork also. Um, we have a memorandum of agreement with the Bon Secours Hospital. They are very good to take a lot of students for us every year, and they get invaluable experience in, in that acute setting. We have commune links with community hospitals, Tralee, Listole, Carsevine, Dingle, nursing homes and daycare centres. Um, and again, so far this year, our students have been very successful and a lot of them have already started working part time, which is absolutely wonderful. And we're really proud of them and we're delighted to, to hear. Um, reason six, why you should study healthcare support in Kerry College. So we offer additional courses to enhance the students' experience and improve employability. Um, so we are really, really fortunate to be able to offer our students manual handling, person moving training, first aid training, workshops, CV and interview preparation. Um, registration with HSC Land is a new development for us this year. We have the opportunity to now register with HSC Land, which allows students the opportunity to get additional certification, which is really looks favorable on their CV and enhances again their employability prospects. And we also have links with recruitment agencies and we would regularly engage and get them in to speak with students in relation to, to um, seeking work both during their studies and on completion of the course. Um, so that is it in a snapshot. So um, any questions, I will welcome any questions um, if anybody has them. And I'll pass you back to John now. Thank you, uh, Thank you Caroline. We, we had a number of questions there, but uh, Ella from Admissions Office was picking up on them and answering them okay. in the Q&A uh, section, which is great. One lady had an interesting uh, question. Uh, it, we get this quite a lot, Caroline, uh, and that's around uh, people's age. She uh, had a question that, you know, she was concerned that her age would be against her uh, if she was pursuing a qualification in nursing. Um, and I don't think she's talking about being young. She's talking about being mature. So could you talk a little bit about that? Um, absolutely not. Absolutely go for it. You know, a mature student would be classified for the purpose of entry to nursing as 23 plus. Um, but now I don't know what the age this lady is, but we would have people of all ages every year going into nursing. Um, so we would have people in their 40s, 50s entering nursing every year. So, you know, it's wonderful. And I think it's a wonderful opportunity to have a second chance at, you know, a career. And if it's something you've always wanted to do, absolutely go for it. Um, I guess and we will be yeah. there to support you throughout yeah. that process. No, that's that's great. That's great to hear and reaffirm that. I, I guess people need to realize as well, mature learners in particular, is that people pick up skills across their entire life. They pick up people skills and particularly people that have raised their own families can often reach a stage in their life where they feel, you know, I'm kind of done now. I've nothing to give back. But you put all that experience 
You've got all that, all that project Absolutely. management, you know, if you want to call it that, of managing a family Absolutely. and dealing with the drama of children in their teens and health, health issues and all that. And they're bringing a whole bundle of this amazing experience, but sometimes they don't feel like they can go back to college. Mm -hmm. They feel like almost that it's passed them by. So I guess it's important to recognize that as well. Absolutely. It's so true when people do bring such amazing personal qualities, but also skills they've acquired through their own careers and past careers careers, present careers, and it's amazing what they can bring. And I think our next speaker, um, Tim Minahan, proves that, you know, he has bought um, fantastic skills and qualities into the programme, and he has just absolutely flourished. And we wish him all the best in his future career. Yeah, you could work, you could, you could definitely get a job in Radio Kerry. You segued into that really nicely. Caroline, you introduced him oh really well gosh. there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, John. We need to get on to, to, get on <laughs> to Fio it's time for career change. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think Stephen Goulding would be too happy with that or John Skinner or Carmel. I don't think they'd be too happy with me for suggesting that. Um, yes, this gentleman, I, I should switch on his camera now. We'd like to, I was chatting to him earlier, uh, Tim Moynihan, um, who is a very well-known voice Um across County Kerry on the radio uh, for GAA and other sports. We could spend an hour talking to Tim and we might do at some point. He's a very interesting gentleman. Uh, I guess a career way back in the early days in the pub trade, I guess, Tim, you you, you grew up uh, sort of uh, in, in a house that had a pub beside it and a publican family. And, and then you went into retail, had a highly successful career in retail and then into radio. And uh, you, you, you're you a, a reporter for many years on Radio Kerry, presenter of Terrace Talk, a columnist, a panelist. And, um, and, and then you decided to change. So a lot of people, Tim, would have enough with all that stuff that say, you know, I've done all these, these, these great things and I've had a great success, but you were hungry for more change. Uh, and tell us what was behind your decision to go down the healthcare route. You're very welcome, by the way, Tim. It's lovely to have you here. Thanks very much, John. And by the way, um... Caroline there, I think she's ready for radio. You see the way she dealt with that glitch there in technology? She's, Not a problem. She pursued, yeah, and she got it, and fair play to her. Um, yeah, John, I suppose all my years, I, I spent time in the private sector. And as you know, um, I, I suppose that you talk there about the journey of life, and you, you do, I suppose, have those skills or acquire those uh, skills during that time. Yeah, I spent a lot of time in the retail trade, and you mentioned uh, the hospitality side of things and radio but I suppose what they do John is they you kind of explore your your inner self or how you can get out there and what can you do and prove something to yourself and I suppose there comes a time as well and you say maybe look I've done okay at that and uh, maybe there's something else that may be more rewarding and about two years ago I was going to try and get on the course at Kerry College um, doing the healthcare support course but unfortunately the timing wasn't right and then I suppose COVID turned a lot of our lives upside down and I was no different to, to anybody else. And especially if you are in the private sector and uh, it was the ideal opportunity for me to, um, I suppose, go back to education. It's a long time ago since I went to, it was called Trelly. I don't know how many of our, our audience tonight uh, will recognize it as Trelly RTC, but that's where I spent uh, my years uh, doing business studies uh, a long time ago. So for me to go back into education, it was, it was a huge decision, John. Uh, but on the same token, um, I'm nearly at the end of it now, and uh, I, I'm delighted with the journey. And you just spoke there to Caroline, uh, Caroline Castle, and there's another teacher, of course, as well. And she's a qualified nurse, uh, Joanna Mahoney. And we had four teachers and all. They specialise in their own uh, delivery of their own modules. We had, uh, we, uh, we had uh, Michelle Nocton and we had Suzanne Duna. So uh, these are all professional people. But the big thing with the course, and I, I think Caroline mentioned it there, is you're talking about people that have served or worked in that environment in the care setting and you can't put a price on that John you know these are qualified nurses and they're bringing their their life experiences at, at a profession profession that they love and you can see there uh, Caroline has so passionate about what she does and even when she speaks about even at times she'd explain the human body to us and the workings, she still is intrigued as when she went to college to learn. And I think that's the that's what we got back from Caroline and uh, everyone delivering the course. And, and it's really worked wonders. And I would say that if there's somebody listening to us or, or watching this, like you say, you'll be putting it on, uh, I suppose, the internet tomorrow and uh, for a broader or a wider audience that give yourself a chance as well, John. There was a couple of days into the course and I was asking, why am I doing this? or 
I was thinking probably too far down the road as well, John, that maybe, look, if I get an assignment, will I deliver it in time? Will I have it, it I suppose, presented in a proper manner? So I, I, I would say try and stay in the in the present when you're doing. If you go in, I, I, th I think after a couple of days, something, there will be a spark there. And uh, that's what I would say. And I, I, you think I was waiting for my results or waiting to mark that I'm looking for good grades here from Caroline and the rest. But the thing is, if you give anything a chance, John, and you, you learn a lot about yourself and, and and I think COVID has thrown up a huge talent for us as well, John, that um, I didn't think I'd be doing uh, working online uh, for most of the course. We were almost four months on, uh, online, which was a bit unfortunate because you'd like that face to face, that that connection inside in class. But I, I suppose it, it gives a chance to see how good are we. I, I suppose the human nature has it that we're we're survivors. And that's we actually everyone on this planet has done it uh, this year that you try and survive that, you know, we're thrown with probably something we hope will never again happen in our, any of our lifetimes. And we seem to have, please God, come out at the other side of it. So that's what it, it's done for me, John. And, and I, I you said it there that, um, you know, the journey of life that what I've learned, I suppose. It's fine. The teacher delivers everything to you. They're trying to steer you in the right direction. But the best evaluation, John, of anybody is to evaluate yourself. That, say, if you're taking on the course, you look in the mirror. Am I giving it everything with the resources I have at hand? Rather than being negative, saying this teacher is tough or that teacher is tough or yourself. Look at yourself. And I, I think if you do that on a continuous basis, you'll come out well at the other side. And the other thing I, I said, Danielle mentioned it there. And I, I tell you, uh, inspirational stuff uh, earlier from that student. And what she mentioned one word and it resonated, respect. And, and Caroline and, and the, her, her, her fellow teachers, you were, every one of them show respect. You, because our, our class was made up of maybe 18, 19, 20 year olds. And then the vintage of myself and a few in between. So the respect they show for each one. And, and I, I'd probably have learned that in, 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 on life's journey that uh, I think everybody and yourself included, John, somebody had a profound influence on you. You went into radio. I'm sure somebody influenced that. And you in turn have, have had a profound influence on somebody else. And if we can all learn that about ourselves, that Everything we do, and if we, if I went to the, a care setting, I would hope that I would have a profound influence on somebody else, and somebody showing me inside there would have the same thing. And you know, I think over this last twelve months, we've learned a lot about ourselves, John. No, no doubt. And I think what's striking me as well, uh, just chatting to you, Tim, is that. You know, if you look at what you've done in your career so far, and, and it's by no means over, there's, I'm sure there's another, uh, you know, a twist and turn in the road for you. Uh, you have a lot of people out there, Tim, that would be good with people, you know, good with people. And they would say, you know, ah, well, I'm going to go into this thing because that's what you do when you go to people. But look at what you've done. You, you've, you were in the pub trade. You ran a pub yourself. It's about people. Um, you went into retail. That's about people. Now, you could say everything's about people. That's not strictly true. There are certain careers that are less people focused. Uh, and look at what you're doing now. Again, you're leveraging your, your, I suppose, your love of people, your love of being around people, serving people again is the other thing, isn't it? Um, you know, you're serving people on the radio. You're serving people in retail. You're serving people in the pub trade. So people need to consider as well where they're at with themselves. What do I enjoy doing? People will often say that, what did you enjoy doing when you were a kid? Now, you can't be a professional soccer player. Like, let's be real about it. But you can think, am I a people person? Do people charge me up and, and sort of bring me energy? Or do they, do they exhaust me? People charge me up personally, I think it's the same for you. I get energy from being around people. Some people are introverted and people exhaust them. So you kind of need to know what, where you are as well, don't you, before you make that choice. Yeah, very much so, John. You know, a wise man once taught me that um, you're happy if somebody does something nice for you, but you're a lot happier if you've done something nice for somebody else. And I, I think that really sums it up. And, and I, the big thing, and we've learned it on the course, that, and it's part when you're dealing with anybody, that we, none of us can be judgmental, you know, and I suppose we all, it all happens just throughout our life that you look at something, somebody has a weird hairstyle, you'd say, oh, weird to you maybe, we shouldn't judge. We shouldn't judge that. And, and the thing is that whatever anybody, and if, if this little bit of advice tonight, and like I say, the, the journey of life, that whatever people think of you, it's none of your business. So you go with what's good for you. And I suppose what's good for me is that I've been surrounded by people. And that's what COVID kind of isolated me during that time. But I, I had a lovely distraction during the course that, you know, um, it's, 
nice i suppose everybody wants to be accepted but at the end of the day it's 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 it's, it's what you want and if you can deliver something good to somebody i think um all the radio awards in the world doesn't matter after that uh what it is it's it's your own i i suppose some some people say i have a conscience there's also we and we like to be accepted john and, and that's part of it and I, I think what the course and what the kerry college has thought of me i wish john going back when I, I suppose I was uh, doing leave and start and going on to college, I wish that we had, I suppose, that sort of service, Kerry College, or to know I think have evolved so much and you have to, you know, evolve with them. And, and the one thing I would say as well that maybe for somebody interested in taking up the course, maybe to do a little course online on computers, because maybe somebody my vintage wouldn't be as tech savvy as, uh, you know, as the younger age group. But once you get around and you, you surf surf the nets to see uh, you know it's a great starter as well but look we, we've learned a lot about ourselves on this course and and compliments to every speaker tonight and uh, since i've logged on i'm sure they were just as good the, the early ones and to yourself you're you're a great anchor man john as you've proven in the past and you, you're delivering tonight as well Thank you, Tim. Can I thank you so much? Tell me just finally before we wrap, because we're a good bit over time and, and I'd like to thank you for your time this evening. It's been brilliant to talk to you. Um, can you talk a bit about your job? Because, you know, it's input output. You, you come into the to Kerry College, you do healthcare support. You're, you're about to move into employment, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm in the, in the process on, on a panel. Um, yeah, the job, look, my side of it, I probably, hopefully, uh, if things work out, I'll be working in the community. And as Caroline said it as well, and, and I, I suppose it, it highlighted during, I, I think, the COVID, I suppose, in all our minds, but I, I, it, there's good things have come out of it as well. That you look, the majority of elderly people, John, they, they want to stay in their own home. Uh, and it's, I, I suppose, they want their own independence. They want to be, I suppose, part of their decision making. Very important that every, anytime you work with a patient, they'll have to be part of their own decision making. And it gives them that, that you know, that self esteem and everything. And listening, I, I suppose, we need the, the practical side of it now to be out in the community. That I suppose we've learned in the course that when you're dealing with someone, you treat a patient, or if you're calling to a house and doing sort of health, health support, helping a, a public nurse or helping the family, you treat that person the same way as you'd like to be treated yourself. And I think that's an, the humane side of, of the course was absolutely brilliantly delivered as well. But I think, look, it, it's given me a different angle on life. Uh, I've learned things about myself. <laughs> uh, none of us like to get old, John, but there's plenty of support out there. And I'd like to be a, a part of it, um, helping people and making them feel better about themselves. And it goes back again, um, without fear of repeat myself, that if I can make somebody happy, then I think I'd have a, a good day's work done. Uh, that's great. Tim, delighted to talk to you. Delighted you, you you came and spent some time with us in Kerry College. Uh, wish you every success in the next phase of your career. And we'll definitely meet for a cup of when things settle down and this social distancing and, uh, and the pandemic sort of evaporates, like I hope it will do with the summer sun in the coming months. So I wish you well. And thank you as well for joining us this evening, Tim Moynihan, Thanks graduate everybody. of our healthcare support programme. Thank you, Tim. And now finally, um, a, a lady that I worked side by side with for the last couple of years, a Killarney lady uh, who works in our admissions team. Uh, Ella O'Donoghue is going to talk to us a little bit now uh, about um, the apprenticeship uh, programs available uh, through Kerry College, but also uh, a little bit about the admissions office and its role on applications and entry requirements, fees and funding, and how places are offered. So Ella, good evening. Uh, how are you? I'm good. Thanks, John. How are you? And thank you for staying with us uh, all the way through <laughs> until the end of this. It's uh, it, it's it's uh, It's been a long session, but a really great one. So um Tell us a little bit, first of all, I guess, about, about apprenticeship and, 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 and then on to maybe the, the fees funding and application process. Yeah, perfect. So tonight I'm going to talk about the apprenticeship. I'll do a little bit on fees funding and then how we apply. Um, so my name is Ella O'Donoghue. I work in the admissions office. And um, OK, I'm going to start with the apprenticeships. So um, firstly, I suppose, what is an apprenticeship? So an apprenticeship is a contract of employment with a SOLAS approved employer. And to qualify for an apprenticeship, you must have an employer. So in the admissions office, a lot of learners, they contact us and they tell us that they want to um, do an apprenticeship. But unfortunately, it is up to the learner or the apprentice themselves to get their own um, employer to take them on. And we do get employers that come to us from time, time to time telling us that they want um, or they're looking for apprentices. So we will 
um, we will advertise that on our social channels or Facebook or social media or um, Instagram or Twitter or LinkedIn. So just make sure you're following us on that. Um, so an apprenticeship is on the job employer based training with off the job training in college and they run from two to four years and they offer qualifications from QQI level five to level 10 on the national framework. So I'll just draw your attention there to the website. That's a really good website. Um, have a look at that if you are interested in, in doing an apprenticeship. Also, the This Is Fet website. So some of our own previous um, apprentices that went through Kerry College have some success stories up there. So at the moment, there are 59 different types of apprenticeships in Ireland to date, but there's more being launched in the coming months. Um, I think Simon Harris are, um, brought, there's a new strategy um, being brought out now that they're going to try and have um, 10,000 apprentices in the next five years. And they're also bringing in grants for employers that do take on apprentices. So um, we have, there's the more traditional ones such as construction, electrical, motor, but there's new apprentices now being added all the time. So biopharma, um, recruitment, finance. So if you have a look on, again on the apprenticeship.ie website and you just click on the area and it'll bring down the list of different apprenticeships that are there. And what are the benefits of doing an apprenticeship? So more than half of the learning will take place on the job. So it's great for any practical learners. Um, you get a secure contract of employment. So you, you get a contract of employment with your employer, employer for the duration of your apprenticeship. There, it's an earn and learn model. So you're earning money from the minute you start your apprenticeship all the way throughout your apprenticeship. Um, you're building skills from when you start your apprenticeship and you qualify with job ready skills that you can take all over the world. And you can always build on your apprenticeship as well. So if you did an electrical apprenticeship, but you wanted to go back and say do electrical engineering, you can always build on the qualification that you get. So there are two different types of apprenticeships. There are the craft apprenticeships that were developed prior to 2016. So these are the more traditional apprenticeships such as carpentry, um, mechanics, fishing. So they're done in different phases. So phase two, four and six, you will be in a training facility. So such as phase two would be done in an ETB such as Kerry College. So you'll start your, your apprenticeship in phase one. You'll be with your employer for a minimum of three months and you will be called for phase two. So that's where you could be called to Kerry College. Um, phase four and phase six then are done in ITs or MTUs. Um, the new apprenticeships then are the ones that were developed after 2016. And these vary in duration from two to four years and also qualification levels. So you can get either between level five or level 10 on the national framework. And um, these are delivered either online or in training centers. So I just have two examples there. So the insurance practitioner is a new apprenticeship that is a three-year apprenticeship and you're four days on the job. And then you're a day online with IT Sligo. And then after the three years, you get a level eight qualification. Um, the accounting technician is a two-year apprenticeship and you're four days with your employer and you're one day then in college and then you get your levels. Um, again, you can always build on this qualification if you wanted to go back to do accounting, that's all, also possible. So it's, I suppose the apprenticeships are a more practical way of learning. So it just depends on the learner themselves and how they prefer to learn. Um, again, the apprenticeship.ie website has got loads of different su success stories. There's just some examples there. Um, so I would um, advise anyone that's interested in doing an apprenticeship to have a look and maybe give a read of some of the stories that are up there already. I think it's important to note as well that um, the number women can also do apprenticeships and the number of women that are doing apprenticeships are growing. So in 2015, there was 26 women apprentices registered in Ireland. And in 2020, that, that number rose to 730. And in 2021, um, that figure went over a thousand. And this lady here, Zoe, became the thousand woman apprentice in Ireland. Um, her story is actually up on the apprenticeship.ie website. Um, she just said that she, after when she was in school, she was never told about apprenticeships. And she went, I think, to UL doing science teaching and she didn't like it. So she dropped out and her brother went to an all boys school 
and he told her about apprenticeships and she saw an apprentice, apprenticeship then with Cork City Council. She's doing that at the moment. So Kerry College, we want eight different types of apprenticeships and we're hoping to introduce hairdressing and wind turbine in the coming months. And our stone cutting and stone masonry apprenticeship, we're the only college in Ireland that runs that apprenticeship. So all phases are actually done with us in our Mona Valley campus. And what are the entry requirements for an apprenticeship? So you have to have a minimum of grade D in your five subjects of your junior search. Um, but to be honest, most employers nowadays are looking for a minimum of the leaving cert, and they may also look for particular grades in your maths or engineering, maybe. It just depends on the employer, um, and you have to be 16 years of age. This lady here, Angel, actually, she did her phase two with us in Kerry College, and she's doing the metal fabrication apprenticeship with um, a company in Cork. So what are the costs for our courses at Kerry College? So our courses for employment, they have no fees. So our courses for employment are interview-based courses. So you'll have to do an interview um, to get a place on those courses. So generally it's either myself or my colleague and the instructor or teacher on the course that do, that do the interviews for the courses. Um, our courses for progression have a registration fee of 130 euro. And then, like I said, the apprenticeships, you get paid to do your apprenticeship um, and all throughout your apprenticeship. And it depends on the sector that you're doing. And what funding and financial supports are available to you? So um, you have three options. So the SUSE grant. So we would recommend that everyone um, looks, logs into the SUSE website and checks if you're eligible for the SUSE grant. Um, I meet learners every year who don't bother, they just presume that they're not eligible, but have a look on the website, it it's very short, it just takes five minutes to put in your details and to see if you're eligible. And training allowance, so applicants that are already on a social welfare payment may be eligible to get paid a training allowance, or also there's application allowance, that's um, another social welfare payment, so you have to talk to your social welfare officer about that. So how do you apply? So you can apply online through our website. So all our courses are available now to apply to. Um, so when you click on the course that you want, you hit the apply now button. That will redirect you to the Fetch courses website and you'll have to register on that website. Um, it, it's free to register. It takes five minutes, but we have to, you'll have to register in Fetch courses to apply for our courses. And alternatively, you can get in touch with us. Our phone number is 066-714-9696. Our, our email address is there as well. Um, we have an, an admissions office in 7 Denny Street in Tralee. We're closed at the moment. We're all working from home, but we're available to do online clinics with anyone. So we can do them over, over Zoom or over Teams um, or over the phone, whatever suits you. So thanks very much. Thanks for listening. I'll stop sharing there. Thanks very much, Ella, and thanks for including a picture there with that old man in the middle with the grey <laughs> hair uh, from last year. Ella, thank you so much. And uh, I guess like people do, it's it really interesting what you said about Susie Grants, that it, it, people contact us all the time and they assume that they don't qualify. Um, yeah. So uh, it's, it's good to check that. And, and applications are open now, aren't they? Yeah, oh, applications are open now. So again, just apply to our website. But if they want to give us a ring, we can talk them through it. That's no bother as well. That's brilliant. Um, That's brilliant. Ella, thank you so much for staying with us and thank you for your time this evening. And I will talk to you tomorrow, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Ella O'Donoghue there from our uh, admissions office. And that is where we leave it this evening. Uh, thank you so much for um, attending and staying with us. We have a number of attendees still here, good number of attendees still with us. And for everybody that uh, tuned in right across the evening, we hope you found uh, it of value. We hope you found information that was relevant to you. And maybe it just got you thinking about if you're a mature learner, thinking about going back to college, uh, if you're a school leaver and you're thinking now in new ways about the courses that we offer, um, and maybe you're a returner after a number of years thinking of coming back and just doing something new, pick up the phone and give us a ring or admissions office, office hours, Monday to Friday, uh, 066-714-9696 and email info at kerrycollege.ie. Our full list of courses, of course, is available online 24 seven. You can browse and you can book at uh, kerrycollege.ie.